Hello, welcome. It's hard lore time. What's up, Bowen? Hey, man. How's it going? It's going so well. We just had a nap. You together? <laughs> With like the whole, uh, everybody at our undisclosed location had like a, an hour nap. It was really one nice. bed? Yeah. <laughs> just, well, yeah, one, one really big bed. It was head great. toe? Yeah. No. <laughs> Come on. No. We're not, we're not weird. <laughs> okay, got it. Well, let's talk about this guest we have. Who do we got? We got the we got the host of the number one soda review of all time. Show number one time. soda review show ever. In Fastest history. growing, award winning. Dude, I'm getting followers <laughs> by the dozens. <laughs> Left and right. Look at the Hundred, shirts. Hundred of followers since he began. You know, can you tell the shirts we're wearing? I don't know if you can, but they can. You guys are repping the the dual brand, brother. The, yeah, straight up. Well, anyway, it's, it's James Pluggy. <laughs> James Hammers McPligu, mm. vocalist of Harm's Way, which, ha- welcome, James. Hey, thanks for having me on. You know, This is faded. Uh, yeah. It's been a long time coming, I feel. Yeah. Friend of the show, fan of the show. All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this, James. I, I probably talk to Bo as much, if not more, than you do at this point. At this point, just because you and I are so busy business partners yeah. yeah with respect to him i'm sick of the guy <laughs> what's your relationship with bo like to some 20 odd years later well hey we've been we've been through a lot together i'll tell you that much through um, the ringer as they say i mean it's funny to think that like you know obviously when you when you're in a band with somebody and you obviously tour for as long as we have and been in the band for as long as we have, it's like you basically live with them, you know, for six months out of the year for many, many years at this point. So I will say when we're at home, we probably don't hang out as much um, only because, you know, we're sick of each other at that point. (laughs) Um, We we live a ways apart. Yeah. He lives in the city. I'm, I'm a suburb, suburban guy. Um, But but yeah, we 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 go out to eat from time to time. We obviously have band practice once or twice a week, every single week. Um, you know, I, I would say most That's of crazy. our. Yeah, I mean. Uh oh, hold on! I just fucked something up. My bad, my bad. Don't worry, don't worry. It's coming, it's coming. Oh. There you go. We're right. good. We're yeah, good. Sorry right. about that. Um, scumbag. Sorry about that. I wanted to make sure we were on the same <laughs> setting. <laughs> He's at it again. <laughs> I can't stop. Dude. No, you know I love me some Bo. It's it's uh, <laughs> I, I, ju- I jest on the show, but like, dude, but, you're you're working with people. You're you're relying on people's like everything's and like, hey, we forget. We I would have forgotten XLR cable today. You if it do wasn't be for him. forgetting, but <laughs> he got me today. So you want James got Bo. <laughs> we right. I, I got mean, we kind of we we bump heads. We kind of bumped heads a little bit even today. But but then like what two hours later we're having like a heart to heart. Creatively yeah. or like what's for dinner? Yeah, no, creatively. But okay. sometimes it is what's for dinner. Sometimes yeah. it is. I mean, when did we meet? <laughs> when, when was that? We met at a stand and fight show. Yeah, in I think Darien, we, Illinois. Weren't they imp- still impact? They were still impact. So right? it must have been two thousand four. Yeah, I couldn't drive yet. Two thousand four. So. Um, well. Either 2004 or 2005. 2003. I think it may have been. I couldn't drive yet. I got my license 2003. Oh, <laughs> wow. But might, it might have been 2003 then. Yeah. I think, so I think it was a year that much yeah. we know. And, and that long, almost 20 years ago. The, for the sure. impact stand and fight long sleeve. Had it. Green <laughs> and blue? blue green on blue? I got. I had gray with black. I had like the OG edge. One of, one. One of the first shirts of many that I stole from Taylor. <laughs> I, I still have it. I still have wow. ha- uh, the same ex girlfriend who returned Marissa. She returned that strap oh. to me. She returned that zip up to me. She was like, "You might as well still have it." I would love to see you put that on. It's a it, dude. I think it's a youth large. You were in. You were. You bought youth larges in the youth dude, large at era. At the time, James. At yeah. the time, ev- including him, we all wore small. Everyone wore smaller shirts. Tight smaller shirts. That was the you know. I, I, I never there? wore youth large. Let me let me be. Well, no, not clear. youth large. That's what I'm saying. You know what's funny is when we met him, Caution introduced us to you, John Caution of Weekend Nachos and later of Harm's Way. Um, 
was like, oh, this is James. Uh, we call him Youth Crew James. We also, people call him Mini Wrench because at the time he was like shaved head, b- built, mm-hmm. even though were you in high school still? 2003? Um, Had to be. When I met you, I think I, I was a senior. So, 2000, yeah, so 2003, 2004, yeah. So. There you go. So there you go. We figured out the year. But it was like, yeah, here's this guy. And we were just like, holy oh, fucking shit. Yeah, of course. You know. Nicest guy, <laughs> nicest man. Just born with a beautiful body, huh? Can you believe it? It's What's genetic. that like? It's, I don't know. It's it's a genetic gift. I gotta think. Uh, yeah, sure. Hans. One, one Hans Pliggy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you do you ever resent the the genetics thing? Because obviously you do have a genetic hand dealt to you. And Colin, I imagine you might feel this way too because you do have a genetic hand dealt to you. You guys have very different hands. Do you hear me, Colin? Very different hands, but. You had to work for what you got. It's not like you woke up one day, Mm-mm. both of you, you know? Yeah. I mean, I guess if we're, if we're going to, obviously, I think genetics play a large role in physique and, you know, health in general. But um, I would say, obviously, I've put in a lot of time in the gym consistently for the last, I mean, I've been lifting for what, 22 years at this point? Um but I would say that it's easier for me to maintain my physique rather than somebody who might have been skinnier and then, you know, got a good physique. Because I, if you look at pictures from when I was like, you know, in fifth or sixth grade, yeah. I already have like broad shoulders. I already have like musculature. Yeah, um, yeah. That's so that's it, the thing I notice is like, like look at John from Vane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was sh- legit shredded before really? doing a single workout in his life. And now he's like brick shit house, you know? Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. He solid. looks good. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a thing. Jeans do play a part. Obviously, you can't just say, like, oh, it's just jeans. That guy doesn't work out. But, right. Of course. That People work out because they're like, oh, I have the jeans to do this. I should probably do this. One of the fucking Garris brothers, Trey. Um, yeah, Trey, dude, the drummer. Yeah. I gotta talk to him, James. If you saw this motherfucker without a shirt, you'd be like, "Hey, man, let's talk. We gotta get you." He's ready to rock. It's crazy. Now's the time. He's like vascular as fuck, shredded. Clearly um, eats like Oreos and just skin. Yeah, you know? <laughs> we've gone to the gym twice this week, Colin. Um, can you tell? Nope. Well, I'm basically huge. It's probably just the camera. Love, yeah, no, it's the end. <laughs> Don't worry about it. But with what you were saying with je- with jeans, like. Like you said, you can maintain easier. Sure. If I if I go a week without working out, no <laughs> joke, I'm visibly fatter. You just like def- oh, you inflate. I was gonna say, oh deflate. my god, I deflate and inflate. Right, I, right. I do. I look like you, people will just be like, whoa, you will look worse. <laughs> <laughs> How many? I don't want to talk about fitness the whole time. No, no, god we don't because nobody wants to talk, hear that. We got to talk about food. Yeah, but. <laughs> How many workout programs have you made for people, <laughs> me included, that just like went into the air and became nothing? Oh, probably, probably in the hundreds. I would say, <laughs> gotta be. Well, I'm I mean, in the I'm in the twenties or thirties at this point. Oh, I, you're making I'm, stuff. For I still look like a sack of shit at most hours of the day. You know. Hmm. Well, I think Bo was referring to how many workout plans have I created for people who yeah, ask me oh, okay. about. Like, hey, can you make me up a workout plan? Like, you know, you know, people come, you know, whatever to the merch table or something all the time. Hey, man, how do you oh get so God. big? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, and so, you know, mostly it's friends or, you know, yeah. family or whatever. And, you know, the thing is, the reality is you have to consistently do this for a long and, you know, over and over and over for many years. You know, diet has to be on point. Working out has to be on point. It has to be consistent. Um, And, I mean, the fact is, is that, you know, life gets in the way many times. It do, man. And you know the whole, like, you can't out-train a bad diet thing? Yeah, I mean. (laughs) I will be fucking buried into the earth trying to prove that wrong. (laughs) I, I actually don't fully agree with that concept because, I mean, I'm going to be honest. When I was in college, I probably looked, I probably looked the best at age like 22, 23. That was like the ski mask, right? Florida picture era. Of course. Like yeah. I, I weighed less then, 
I like probably have more muscle now, but as far as like my physique as a whole, I think that's the best I ever looked. Mm. My diet was completely like unhinged. But when you're at that age, your metabolism will will allow that to happen. Yeah, but okay. I mean, I think that's where genetics plays plays the highest role. Because how long has it been since you worked out? Like he started working out again this week because we he's had shit going on. How long had it been? Uh, it, it'd probably be three weeks. Uh, since dude, I if I went three weeks without lifting, no joke, I, I would it, I would be starting from scratch. <laughs> yeah, but I, which is you sign, a, not true. But in he's my got mind, a, I see, yeah, right. It's in your mind. Yeah. yeah, he's got a foundation. You know what I mean? Boy, yeah. do you? Boy, speaking does. of uh, foundation. Nice. What's what, up? What's up, Colin? <laughs> God, you guys tore with them just, a couple times, huh? Yeah, I don't. Want, I just don't want to talk about lifting the whole time. No, that's no. fine. That's is yeah, that we, not all that you get? I mean, I, I, every it, fucking every fucking thing <laughs> we put. It's like Chicago powerhouse. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like it's, it's always like a double and taunt. It's like yeah. Yeah, okay, you know. No, for sure. I think the that's like one really annoying thing about being physically fit or muscular or whatever is like you automatically get thrown into this category of you know meat being head. yeah meathead like because like there is still an interpretation of harm's ways like oh they're this tough guy hardcore band like like just dude, the least true yeah like <laughs> what what are you listening to yeah like you're looking at like probably a video on youtube and like making that judgment right so you know for me i just like Sometimes I resent like having to that be the first thing people, you know, point out about the band because that's the least important thing about, you know, you know, I want people to listen to music. I don't want people to look at me and be like, oh, yeah, this is their singer so rich. But the thing, the secret is that the balance is of both of those things is really what works long term. I I genuinely believe. So true. Sure. This is, this is. This is me off the rip here. I mean, it, look at Peter Steele. Oh, a beautiful, it's sexy a, man. Per, per, if listen, balance. this is my theory. Mm-hmm. If 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 I was a sexy guy when Disharmony came out, would have been a different fucking story. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, that was rock bottom. So, I mean, I'm sure. It, I'm sure it helps, like <laughs> in the sense of, like, oh, like I'm gonna check out this band because of you know that. But yeah. You know, I, I I guess it bothers me more when, you know, we, we, you know, work on a record, for example, fucking four years we've been working on this thing, we put all this time, and then you get this review from, like, some reputable place, and the first fucking thing they say... Huge is, cocked singer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Does, like, has like, huge dude, cock. Yeah. Give me a fucking break. There's actually one particular interview when Post Human came out. Um, it was from some European. I mean, that's already a, a hey. knock right there. But Amen. Um, <laughs> it begins but, um, <laughs> minute 14. <laughs> but uh, no, they literally, they were like, post-human sounds like Madball. Are you serious? And I was like, I was like dude, Madball is probably one of my favorite bands ever yeah. and probably questionably the best New York hardcore band of all time. But Harm's Way literally sounds nothing like Madball. Couldn't. And then like, his follow-up was like, by the way, I have only heard Madball. Yeah. 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 I haven't listened to the new record yet. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like, how could you listen to Post Human and say it sounds anything like Madball other than it has a guitar, drums, and bass? Like yeah, that's right. like the similarities, you know? It's true. So anyway. I mean, do you do you experience that with God's Hate with with Big Bad Brody King? Uh, I mean, you kind of want it, don't you? Yeah, that's, like, it. you, that's the thing. Is like we, yeah. I think we've found the balance now, mm-hmm. especially with the message. The like, life is hard, be harder stuff. Like, hey, there you go. You got the shirt on. <laughs> like, we're doing that. You know, I, I like I, I've my body has changed more times in the past four years. I've, I've been, I've embodied five different bodies in the past four <laughs> years. So like. Like doing what you're saying is kind of like kind of what we kind of f- figured out is like, oh, this is because Twitching Tongues never once thought about the way we looked other than like wearing a sick shirt. Yeah. <laughs> and like now I'm like, maybe we should have. But in reality, 
the, the live show is what brings people back. You know, the, the record, and like you said, you work so hard on a record, but the record's only going to do half the job. Totally. We, we are, I mean, there's two types of bands. I, I guess really you could break it down to two types of bands. I don't know if this is true, that true or not, but like there's like live bands that can rely solely on the live thing. And then there's recorded bands that can do the opposite and record or, you know, rely solely on the, the record. And like we, for a long time, it was like, we didn't get people until they saw us live. Mm. Period. I mean, because brother, yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause it's all energy, you know, yeah. it's this guy's moving all the time. I try to move as much as I can. We try to be tight. Dude, you were all over the fucking place. Gotta be bouncing bean. Little yeah. b- boy. That's you're gonna, a, that's you're gonna, a silly guy, James. Well, I feel like we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll open we'll open this can of worms I at mean, some point in this episode. Yeah, yeah let's go. Let's, let's People do don't it, know man. that you're just, you're you're probably the funniest member of the band. <laughs> I mean, that's a given. I- <laughs> <laughs> but see, it's like it's effortless. It's like that, you know. Yeah. Um, it takes a while, doesn't it? It, it takes you. You got to be comfortable. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, no, for sure. I think people know me as like a pretty quiet, you know, kind of just keep to myself person. Mm-hmm. But um, there's definitely that that comfortability once I'm comfortable around people. Like, yeah, I think the goofiness comes out. Yeah. You know, I mean, out of any place on earth, like the band is obviously where it comes yeah, out yeah, the yeah. most, you know, because I'm around these guys all the time. Um, but But, yeah, I mean... I don't know, man. You can't take yourself too seriously. No, I think your presence is what makes it like you. You do this thing consistently where you'd come up and just be like, <laughs> and for some reason, I don't know what it was about. I would just cr- piss my pants laughing every time. He's got a a really good bit that he's been doing for probably a decade, <laughs> where someone will be like, uh, "James, tomorrow I want to go over this with you, and um, I think we should try to do X, Y, and Z." And he'll go, "Oh yeah, yeah." <laughs> And that's I mean. it. He just hits, he just no sells it. And it's like every, or he'll be like, oh, sure. And then he'll look at me and we both just like giggle like school kids, you know? There's a, there's a classic one that you used to hit me with all the time where anytime I was complaining about something, if I'd be like, well, these motherfuckers forgot my fries, you'd be like, yeah, I wrote a song about it. It's called really? Breeding Grounds. <laughs> what? Like any issue I had with any person, you're like, yeah, I wrote a song about it called breeding grounds i mean i literally don't even remember that that's classic i got i got a lot of bits yeah he's up to his ears and bits we uh (laughs) we just ate shake shack how was it across across the street it's pretty good what'd you get i'm i just got the standard standard burger lettuce tomato onion with the sauce with the sauce yo you got it i found a little hack there they got they got the cherry pepper relish Oh, I saw that. Ooh, oh my god! I saw that. Dude. It changed everything for me. <laughs> I mean, Cherry I pepper say, relish. Add a side of shack sauce for the fries. Come on. Here's what's fun about James, for me personally. He and I are almost identical when it comes to palate. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's when it very comes close. to the kind of food that we like. We're we may like the same things to different degrees, but we like the same things. Interesting. Like you, for the you most plain part. guy, James. Uh, no, I wouldn't say plain. No. Not as plain as me. Okay. But as far as like, like I like. You're not I'm, like a sauceman. No, not like not. I'm not like you when it comes to sauces oh. at all. But I'm lost in it, man. A sick fuck. Really. I will say I've like maybe in the last year, like if I'm trying something new, I want to try it as it's supposed to be. Hence the the shack sauce. So, so I tried like I've had Shake Shack before, mm-hmm. but I never actually had the the um, shack sauce or whatever. How was it? What did you think of it? Um, I thought it was good. I thought it added a nice element to the burger. I personally don't like mayonnaise that much, um, but <laughs> <laughs> but but again, you know, sometimes like hey, like whoever thought of that idea, mayo? you know, they thought this was an important. <laughs> well, not mayo, whoever but invented shack sauce. Mayonnaise, honestly, a fucking hero to me. Nah, well, one of thing- my personal air conditioning guy, mayo yeah. guy. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, of course. Dude, that's another. Th- James and I have a lot of weird similarities. And I talk about. I, I mention <laughs> you a lot on the show. Sure, yeah. As, no. as I'm sure you've noticed, but I'll go. You know, James. <laughs> he gets as hot as me, as quick as me. Mm-hmm. 
he he needs a he needs something sweet. Listen, man. As, as soon as I do, <laughs> I'm I'm one of the ice box boys. Yeah, I know straight the, up. I know. Oh, dude, dude, let's tell that story. I mean, that that's 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 a good. This is a good way to go into some stories, right? Yeah. Now. It is. All right, friend so. friend of the show, Andrew Baker. Great guy. Great guy. Uh, was merch guy for the tongues. Was merch guy for us. Mm-hmm. Um, played in bands, sang in bands. Well, yeah, and he was in band. <laughs> I don't know if he was playing. <laughs> we did a. Uh, he sang for What's Good. He we um, we did an international tour. We went to Southeast Asia, Japan, and, and Australia, and he was our merch guy. Mm-hmm. And we decided this is when he hit us with Icebox Boys. Mm-hmm. The premise being that room stays as cold as a fucking icebox boy, and you're just in there, right? We're <laughs> we're Byron Beach. Oh uh, yeah, Byron Bay. Byron right. Bay, and um, our our like Australian Josh. Shout out to Josh Housie and Claire at the time. Like booked us a um, like a little cabin kind of thing. I don't know how you would really like a camper almost. Yeah, like we had a few days off, and they like it was basically like just a, a cabin, and like you we walk out the front door, and you can literally just walk out on the beach. Like it Sick. was, it was monsoon season, so it was. Yeah, kind of not so. It great. was cheap. <laughs> it was cheap, yeah. and that, there you go. But <laughs> you know, it monsoon. It, it was still hot because it's it was summer there still. It, it was just yeah, but I remember uh, it either rained or there. No joke was probably what five thousand jellyfish on the beach. The Damn. blue bottle jellyfish, like yeah. they were just everywhere. Um, it was it was a really it was, it was a time. It was yeah. It was that a little, a little strange. A little strange. It was a little strange. But yeah. anyway, we we had been making up. Uh, you know, we've been complaining the whole tour, like you do. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> it's the best part of tour. Is that's the only part I enjoy anymore. And like, we just decided to set the. The AC, which was in Celsius, to the lowest, which I believe was sixteen. I, I yeah, it it was it was very, I think I think sixteen, yeah, but but I think a little part of the back a backstory is that oh, we yeah. had just come from Southeast Asia, um, and melting you know, the whole time. Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. it was just sweating like it's the wet no season, wet. as they say. Yeah, so like so this is like we get to. Australia and like we're like dude we have to have you know max AC we have to have you know all the comforts of home yeah basically essentially Absolutely. so um <laughs> do you want me to finish the story yeah yeah, yeah. I mean it's so good <laughs> so you know the everybody else it's obviously in the in the icebox boys in this on this tour it's me Bo and Baker mm-hmm. and we're in like like the room of the cabin kind of had this one like community room and then had like another room and um a ross shout out a ross chris go into this other room and like i think it had a separate thermostat or something something where they could turn the heat on mm. Th- this other room is so then it was what me you baker uh someone we don't talk about so, okay yeah someone and we don't talk josh about josh and claire and J- josh and claire so it's about 2 or 3 a.m. And I, you know, I have the the normal, like, bed sheets, you know, like comforter. A, like a, oh, but, but like the thin one, like a, th- a summertime yeah. bed set, right? And I'm about as cold as one could be. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally shivering. But, like, but, all but of like, us. But all com- of us are just comfortably cold. shivering. Like, no. Like, oh. Not comfortably. It was fucking oh. freezing. Like, 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 we're talking like, yo, like... This is like way too cold. It's too cold. Okay. So even for us. At the time, what none is, of, you no, said you said it's a 16 Celsius? Yeah. Could you look that up? What's 16 into I, I think it's, it's 55 degrees. Yeah. That's incredible. So <laughs> but like the thing is, yeah, it's so low. Dude, I mean, it, but we're so we're the fucking icebox boys. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. touching that thermostat. No, I get I'll it. cut off my hand before yeah, yeah. I touch it, brother. But, but what's funny is at the time. Nobody knew that we were individually suffering. So we're all just silent in but, our bunk beds. But in like, the yeah, morning. This is sick, right? <laughs> you can't yeah. love being an icebox. Man. <laughs> but like in the morning, we basically like just, you know, confide to each other. Like, yo, like I, 
out of principle, didn't get up to, to change the thermostat because, like, that's not what an icebox boy does. <laughs> the icebox boys, but we really tied one on. You took but, an but, oath. But, straight up. But no joke. Oath. Like, literally no joke. We woke up, and you could see, like, breath yeah. coming out in the morning. The windows were, like... Frosty. Like, yeah. like, like, like yeah, like, like, like almost like... Condensation. A, yeah, yeah, condensation. Dude, it was <laughs> easily the coldest room we've ever been a part of, but... Out of principle. Yeah, we weren't touching that shit. Like, we had a terrible night's sleep. Mm -hmm. We couldn't touch it. And so that's... And then the, another good... Same tour, same guy, A-Ross, we're in Japan. You know, Colin, you probably know better than, than I remember, but in Japan, there's a gentleman who has a home that's, like, in between Tokyo and elsewhere. And it's just, like, a guy who's got, like, a house that everyone stays at. Is this the peanut Wait. butter guy? Oh, I don't know. I have no idea if it's a peanut butter guy. I no idea. We we were there for not too long because it, we literally got there at like one a.m. and left at like seven a.m. Yeah. So we don't even know okay. even whose house. I don't know if I'm allowed to tell this story. Okay, it's not, it's not mine. Well, think about it while I tell my story. Okay. <laughs> a Ross, shout out to A Ross, was a fucking idiot, and. Changed the thermostat from like probably a comfortable 18, which is like 64 degrees or something. I don't know. <laughs> to so, 20. Like, I like it cold and 64 right now. Like, this 64 not, is as cold as I do. It, it was get. probably like 70, like, like comfortable. Just comfortable. 70, On a wall more. unit or central? It was one of those, one of those, like what uh, Taylor has in the studio. I don't wall know. It, like a what powerful that even, wall unit. Like a powerful, like mm -hmm. an installed wall mm -hmm. unit. Dude. And he set it to like twenty three or twenty four. I think I think it might have been even higher. Like I, like like he basically, for whatever reason, didn't think about that it was in Celsius. He didn't think about that each deg each degree of Celsius is like eight yeah, Fahrenheit yeah. or whatever. You know, so he's just like cold in the middle of the night, which I understand because it was winter in Japan, right? Because nor the hemisphere is shit, and we were all like sick. It was just like yeah, kind of yeah. a rough one. I honestly probably wouldn't have even minded being a little warm. When I'm sure. sick, that's the only time I like to be warm. And I woke up. I, I'm not even joking. It was like, <gasps> like I woke up like melting, co physically cooking. Wow. I mean, it, it, he probably put it to like a 90 equivalent. Like, 90? No joke. Dude, no, no, a high 80. No, not even joke. Like we figured it out. And I was like, dude, do you realize how hot that? Like you turned on the heat. And he was like, well, I didn't know. And it's like, who this is was our fourth. This, yeah. A Ross is this guy, Aaron, who he was playing bass for us at the time. Friend of ours. Did he go to high school with you? No, he went to, he was, went to high school with caution. Actually. Okay. James is he, is he a, a friend of the show or an enemy of the show? I don't know if he listens at all. He's a friend of the show. He's a friend of the show. He's a friend of the show. He would listen to this though and defend himself. So. Okay. And that's an indefensible act. So. Yes, um, but two, seriously, in the morning, he was like, well, I didn't know. And this was like our fourth week in Asia. It's yeah, like, yeah. Come on. That's all we got is yeah. Celsius over dude, here, brother. It, yeah. You know. I remember just just being like, dude, like, like, what are you doing? What have you done? Like, me? don't ever touch. Don't, yeah, you yeah. know. Here's, limits. here's where Bully James came in. <laughs> it's like, dude, don't ever touch the fucking thermostat again. Like, this is, that is not acceptable. Period. <laughs> As a fill-in, touching the thermostat? Yeah. He was like a, you know almost a, like a semi permanent villain at that. At that How time. can but, that? I don't. We've never heard this name in my life. And I've Aaron A. Ross. He. I mean, I he, he played. I feel way worse if I know the guy. He actually played for a, a No Guys No Masters tour, like, like earlier early on. on. Yeah. And then he played when you had your cast. Oh, we got to talk about that. We'll talk about that next. <laughs> um, we and then he played. I think that might have been the only tour. It was 2015, so he did Europe too on the Converge oh, tour. Yeah, but yeah. I don't think Colin. I don't think. He, no, I, because when like when no, Disharmony, that no. was that was Samoa. Wait a minute, he had to have because you had to have meet him at least once because we played. I'm sure I've those met him. Four shows with Disgrace. Oh before. yeah. Before yeah. So we, like you probably you, met him but just briefly. Just like what's hey. the what's the um, the studio venue. In Cobb, Com Ka Ka something that starts with a C. Rock City. That's it. Rock City. Yeah, I feel like venue. that. That venue had uh, this legendary guy called <gasps> the Pisha guy. Because <laughs> <What>? before <laughs> he was like an older <laughs> gentleman, 
But before the set, he would uh, walk around all the bands, like asking like about the catering and stuff. He'd be like, "Yeah, we got like Pisha and other things." And the way he pronounced, eventually, people started just calling him to the Pisha pizza. guy to his face. Oh, yeah, like but Pisha as in pizza, pizza. Yeah, Pisha guy. Oh, okay. Dude, that place rocked because the fucking massage parlor was right next door. Yeah, yeah. And that's where that's where I think you and I got a massage together and well, you know, at the same time separately. Yeah, not a couple's. <laughs> not a couple's never. Yeah, okay. And the girl the girl was like I heard I like saw her hand mm-hmm. on the divider because she was standing on James' back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like just yeah. I get one time. of those all the time. Dude, the best. With yeah. so great. It's very There's nice. a lot of a couple of legendary brawls at that venue for sure. Yeah, we saw um Fuck, who's the Dawson's Creek guy? Oh, Diplo. Uh, the What was it? James Vanderbeek, right? Yeah, James Vanderbeek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was we, yeah, playing he, Diplo at the, your show there, yeah. Yeah. Part of that. Right. Like, and there was... Every time I die, right? Yeah, whatever, yeah. there was like a weird... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I was there. And then it was like encouraging people to stay and boo him, essentially. Was the, yeah, basically. Was the, was the premise. Uh, anyway, this place in Japan. <laughs> I don't know who's going to get mad at me telling this, but I'm telling <laughs> uh, It's not a big deal. It's Nobody remembers this, but... Uh, on the Title Fight Foundation Japanese tour, uh, they stayed there. I'm sorry, Aaron Warman. Aaron Warman <laughs> from Long Island, I believe, was the first one to do it, but is just hungry, so makes like a peanut butter sandwich. Yeah. And I so, love a plain peanut butter sandwich. By so the way. every, I guess all of them are like, we're making peanut butter sandwiches now. And they eat, they eat all the peanut butter. All the peanut butter. Which is impressive to do in one sitting, all peanut butter. And this guy posts publicly, I'm sorry to this man, I'm sorry to Foundation of Title Fight, uh, this long message that was like, who did eat the peanut butter? My oh. wife was mad. <gasps> oh, no. Was it, and then he goes, was it Title Fight member? Was it <laughs> Foundation member? But that's who did eat the peanut butter. And the answer was yes. <laughs> the answer was neither. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we stayed at somebody's house once and it was three bands and afterwards, and it was a nice house and it was very, obviously, disclaimer, anyone who lets you stay at their house, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> For the most part. And <laughs> afterwards, this this individual was like saying that we broke a bed, we broke a toilet that literally like I went to use it as one of the first people there and there was just like old shit in it like a horror video game or something. I hate old shit. I'm a new shit. I hate old shit. Guy. And I just it's not good. Wasn't cool. How ugly when, is other people's turds? It's the work mine's a work of art, but everybody else is fucking disgusting. Dude, when okay, when was that Albion House show? When did you break your arm while we were playing? Ooh. Um mid set Dude, you're gonna love this story. I got, I, we got. Uh, there's a whole. I, I'm gonna go back, but what was that year? It was. It had to be 2010. It was no gods. Yeah, to the 2010. Well, it it, it was 2009 it was like, technically. Right, because on the on the tour yeah. was New Year's. Okay, let the man tell the story, Bo. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's actually it's actually a pretty important like point of harm's way actually. Um, wow. so long story short. No, no, no. Short story, long. All right. Hit sure. It. Let's <laughs> Talk do it. Talk about Caution. So prior to this show, Caution, the, f- for whatever reason, we were supposed to play, I think, a couple new songs f- um, that would eventually be No Guys, No Masters. We were doing Steve Kane's radio show, remember? So we were like, oh, we're going to have to do this anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so let's get them down. So, and we were going to play them live in, in the Albion house. Obviously, most people don't know what that is. It's basically, it was just a basement venue, right? Sure. Um, they used to have lots of different shows, and it was usually like pretty popular, so it'd be super packed in there. It was the killer harm's way. Sick. In a basement. Yeah. And so, basically, caution used to work at some call center and Bo also worked at, at one point, uh, called total attorneys. <laughs> okay. And we, for some reason he skips practice because he was hungry or something. Some, some idiotic reason. He lived far North. Our practice space is far South in the city and he didn't have a car, which I grant like, no, it sucks to, to do that. I've been doing it forever. Yeah, but public but- transportation there is like, it, it rocks, and he could definitely get food. So and this is this is John Caution, frontman of Weekend Nachos. Correct, Amundo. Yeah. So, uh, uh, basically, <laughs> yeah. 
there's some things I can't talk about <laughs> in in the argument, but let's just say some words were exchanged. Uh-huh. Um, and he basically tells me to fuck off. Like he, and that, what? so he tells me to fuck off. And I say in return, eat my shorts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, through a text message. <laughs> then he quits the band. That's that. And, and I, well, I should say, so the tour that we had coming up immediately after this show, caution wasn't going to do. Andrew was going to do yeah, Andrew, Andrew Morris, Morris. Morrissey, friend of the show. Yeah. Legend. So, legendary. So we were like, oh, yeah, we absolutely. were like, okay, Andrew's going to play the killer show and Andrew's going to play the radio recording show that we're going to do. And then he's going on tour with us anyway. So like no loss. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, so Andrew comes to practice <clears throat> excuse me, learns the songs. We end up, you know, going down, playing first song. I swing my arm back as hard as I possibly can. Someone, you know, crowns, like puts their crown crown of the head. I hit my wrist right on their head. Arm breaks immediately. Of course. First, first 10 seconds. Lights off. I, I can't scary. hold the microphone, obviously. Yeah. But I'm also like, I can't let people know that I'm no, no. hurt. So w- I play the song with one arm, singing with one one hand, finish the set, and then... Oh, oh, it, it also needs to be pointed out that during the set, when, when you're injured, Hofacker, our other guitar player <laughs> yeah. at the time, had equipment malfunction. Mm-hmm. Okay. His cab didn't work. Cab didn't work. But what's the last thing you check, Colin? <laughs> the you last know what I mean? Thing? It's, it, the last thing you're going to check if it's working or not is a cab, just because that means you got to get another fucking oh, cab. Oh, of course. Yeah. That's right. Insane. So instrument cable, instrument cable, pedals, patch, head, patch, other yeah. guitar, everything's fine. Oh, it's the cab. But it's probably 15 minutes. This is also when we like didn't have samples and didn't stop making noise. Right. So yeah. I'm feeding back for 15 minutes. No fucking way. Swear to God. So James is just there like, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was, I mean, a disaster of a set. A sure. Horrible. Set. Okay. We finish. I have to vomit. So I leave out of pain because out of, yeah. Um, how long, let I me g- ask you this as somebody who broke their hand last year, <laughs> It took a while to hurt. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean Dude. my my adrenaline was pretty high. And <laughs> I'm just just wait. The, the, just wait. Okay. Well, well so <laughs> anyway, we go upstairs. Hofacker comes up to us and says, Hey, uh, I don't want to be in the band anymore. <laughs> and also quits. And we leave for tour. You know, at the time, and what, maybe it was three days, three, four I, days? I think, wow. I think that show was probably a Friday or Saturday, and we left, like, Monday. Yeah. Wow. So so now two members of the band. In a week. So what um, what material was out at this time? Reality been, Approaches, uh, No Gods? Real, uh, yeah. uh, no Gods wasn't out yet. No. Oh. In, imprisoned. Yeah. Imp- um, imprisoned, the self-titled. Come on in. Come on in, Nick. Friend of the show. Hey, Nick. Nick friend of the show, Nick, here. <laughs> um. So yeah, yeah. So just the first two seven inches and the first LP was out, and we were actively writing for No Gods. Okay. We and No Gods some- would would kind of change everything. So that so this is an important part. Um, Hofacker also when he quit was hilarious. He was there with his girlfriend at the time, who was a doctor, who was <laughs> like, uh, "You should probably get that checked out." <laughs> like that, like that was it. That's yeah. and then. And then Hofacker was our like our money man at the time, which is hilarious to think about. And like had a checkbook on him, signed. You, you know, he was like, "The band has this much money in my account. Here you go. I quit." Wow. Yeah. And then what did you do on the way home? It's one of my favorite parts. Yeah, of this story. I mean, this is a really dumb thing to do. Did you go to McDonald's? So, <laughs> no, I. I actually don't know. I might have, but, <laughs> but I to prove to myself that I didn't break my arm. I decided to drive with the arm all the way home with one arm just to so I, oh, I can, I can, you know, stare the wheel. I can rotate fine. What was the motivation there? <laughs> I just, I ne- this, I had never broken a bone until yeah. that day. And I was like, 
dude, I, I mean, I just felt like an idiot. I was like, sure. can't break a fucking arm at a show. At a show. <laughs> how Only long, fucking, how fucking long between the break and stepping into the ER? All right. So this is, this is actually really funny. So I, I didn't, and I also didn't want to tell my parents. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I'm, I'm like, you know, just, I just graduated college. Like I'm like, fuck, I'm going to have to fucking tell my parents I yeah. broke my arm at a show. So I go to bed, I wake up and move my arm like literally a millimeter uh -huh. and I literally like cry in pain. And then my parents weren't home. I get in my fucking Ford Escort and drive myself to the emergency room <laughs> with one arm again, only now the other arm. Yeah, the one. And the one. they're like, yeah, it's just a fracture. Yeah, yeah you broke your, your arm. They they gave you a blue cast. Big blue cast. I'll never forget. Yep. Did you get and the cast day of? Day of. Or did you have to, wow. So this is like a pair. Uh, the exact same thing happened to me, but last year. And again, I tried to go to sleep because I was like, this is probably. <laughs> yeah. I just bruised it. You know? yeah, of course. Yeah. I hurt the 10. And then I woke up and it was like twice the size in purple. And it was like, I don't think I'm, that's, I'm, that's supposed to happen. Yeah, so. no. No, no, might as well ask so, somebody. So then the the tour happens. This is oh, the, like this God. is the whole other thing. Is like we have to teach a Ross. This is where a Ross comes in. Mm. He was able to do the tour, and we have to teach him all the guitar parts. <laughs> Andrew learns the guitar parts. The only jacket he could fit his arm in is like a huge, like <laughs> army trench coat. <laughs> so this fucking psycho is walking oh, around oh, in like yeah, I forgot about. He's that. walking around in like Air Max nineties sweatpants and a trench coat. Wow. And we're like loading into venues. This is still very DIY harm's way. Like I don't even know if we had a booking agent yet. I think we probably it might have been it might have been Bailey. Yeah. So it's that long ago, and we're in a cargo van. Oh God. And we we do the whole tour. We go to Vegas for the first time. And that he's was cast it up awesome. this whole time. The whole time, dude. We we love the we, we, you know the Wheel of Fortune uh, slot machine. Do I know the Wheel of Fortune slot machine? I mean, that, come on, that was a bad question. Bro. Are you fucking kidding me, Bo? <laughs> I'm an amateur <gasps> professional gambler. So I was talking to him about that today. Um, so when it was time for a spin, the cast would hit it, dude. Cast is lucky. Oh, yeah, we nice. used to. We, you we, hit we the rod it. or the button. You switch. Oh, you yeah. alternate. I we alternate. We alternate. Casted the button. Yeah, it, but he would cast the button. But I think, yeah, I think it was, that was funny because it was the first time as a band we'd gone to Vegas. We went to Old Vegas. Yeah. I think we went to the Golden Nugget, actually. Yeah. Classic. And we just, you know, parked the van. Dude, because we, we had some terrible drive, and we were like, you know, if we drove all night and all morning and go straight to Loden, yeah. we could go to Vegas for like six hours. Wow. Yeah, it was, I mean, you know, like- <laughs> I mean, the drives, like, once you get past, like, Denver for people in the Midwest are, like, fucking miserable. Desolate. Yeah. Like, there, it's like, oh, like. Especially if, at that time. That's, oh, yeah. That was Edge Network era. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yes. Motherfuckers don't, now don't know the pain of the, ed when your phone hit Edge Network. It just might as well have thrown it Hours window. of torment, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. I mean, just the salt, like. I just remember like the salt flats, mm -hmm. like it's like, Hey, like, Hey, we had these cool shows in California. Like you're going to play Reno. Then you're going to play Salt Lake. Then you can play Denver. Then you're going to drive 10 hours to Omaha. Oh, minimum, yeah. minimum 10 to wherever like, the next thing is. Yeah. <laughs> fucking ridiculous. Yeah. We, while in Vegas, we God, it's an ugly story, but, um, one of us met a guy who he, he uh oh the the, uh, the the member of us i don't want to point out who because it, it's a little <laughs> weird but it wasn't either of he or i how about okay. that okay uh met a guy got along with him bought the guy a drink i think like gambled with him a little bit or something and uh, then at, to like repay him the guy had a, a a young lady come up and was like hey do you want to go hang out and oh. our our the member of our touring party was like uh oh like no thank you no and like she walked away and he, our guy apologized to other guy. He was like, sorry, man, I didn't, you know, no, no offense or anything. It's just not really my scene or whatever. He's like, don't worry about it, man. You think money or girls run Vegas? This is what's run, what runs Vegas and pulls out a, like crack rocks in his hand. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, she just wanted this. Don't worry about it. 
Oh I'll get her next God, time. Kind of dark. A thing. Very dark. Yeah. And it, it was it was like a like a all of us kind of went, oh. It's like some leaving Las Vegas shit. Yeah, we 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 all kind of like grew up a little bit, like four percent there, you know what I mean? Yeah. That was also that same tour, I'll never forget. We was when we were going to <laughs> Omaha and they were like, Hey, we got a bunch of snow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um we got like five feet of snow. Okay. So just just so you know, like be careful. And we're like we're from Chicago. You didn't get five fucking feet. Like, please. Five feet. Like, maybe the drifts are five feet, like mm-hmm. at the corners with the plows, but please. We get there, and there are snow drifts taller than houses. Dude, wow. I mean, it actually snowed 60 inches. Like, it was like, like you, we had no business going to this show. No, we shouldn't have even. It's, also the, it's also the time where Harlem's Way almost died as well. Yeah. That, that's, that's where I was going yeah. with it. He was driving. Fucking, you tell the story. Dude, oh, well, I, I mean, had a couple of those. Well, obviously, you know, we play this show. Obviously, the show is fucking abismal. Like, because <laughs> it's the middle of a blizzard. Yeah, who's going? Who's leaving no their one's house going. for that? And it's a house show. No and one's like, going. I think somehow we ordered pizza. I remember we ordered like Domino's, delivered it somehow to to the show. Yeah, and then we had to drive from Omaha to home, which is what like nine hours, something like that, eight, eight or nine. Yeah, and That's so it? it's, yeah, not, it's not too bad. bad. Wow. You drive across all of Iowa and then all of Illinois. Wow! Yeah, basically, it, it's not it's not a great drive, but <laughs> no. but um, anyway, I'm driving. You know, we're in the the cargo van, right, with all of our equipment sitting on top of it. This was actually not to not to be pedantic, but this was when we had it all at the back, oh, and yeah, we were yeah. like using it as like a, a headrest, so we, we could like lay with our feet facing forward in the direction of the van. And we're using it like a headboard. Yeah. So I mean, obviously not the safest way to to do anything. No. <laughs> but at the time, the cheapest way to to tour was to do uh, a cargo van. So and that's just like the danger of it is kind of a little fun. You know, like, it's a little. Oh, you know, it's a little like here. You can. Yeah. We're yeah. DIY, no. Dude. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I'm driving. I fucking hit black ice. Like, you know, it might have been maybe 10 minutes into the drive. Yeah, it was, it was very like, early on, yeah. And the guys van. ready to go home? Whoa. Uh, yeah, straight up. <laughs> yeah, and that's, and I remember Bo telling me that he, you could feel the equipment, like, shifting, right, as the van went from mm. the left lane to the right lane to the left lane. Yeah. Oh, Lord. And somehow I, like, this was guy. able to stabilize the van without, like, because, I mean, if there was a car on either side of us, we were... You are toast. F- yeah. 100%. But we were lucky there wasn't... You know, obviously, there wasn't a, anyone on the road except us because we were stupid. And yeah, we, we fucking, you know, even leveled it out. And that we, was when we I, just went on. I remember that was when I like thought to myself, like, okay, James is a good driver. Like, James is an aware driver. Like, he turned out of this tailspin, and I'm not ground up into... Ground beef. Yeah, good, I mean, the, the, good for you for having. Does, are, uh, who, James, are you the wheel man generally? I mean, Bo and I are. Okay. Yeah, like, oh right, we I mean, talked about it, this. Yeah, it's Ad probably nausea. like it's probably like seventy thirty. Okay. Yeah, at most, I do the night stuff. He does the day stuff for the most part. Yeah, I I don't know. I've always felt more comfortable driving. Who's the only one here who's ever uh, crashed the van, James? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I recently did something dumb. I that was at there. home. That don't count. It's true. That's true, isn't it? It doesn't count. Don't count, man. If you I had the trailer, actually, it wouldn't happen. Friendly fire. Doesn't matter. I was tra- I was actually going to the hardware store <laughs> to uh, buy deck boards to fix my deck. <laughs> I stopped at Speedway to get a fountain drink, actually. To, to do a fountain drink with you. <laughs> I backed out. I mounted the curb thinking, okay, well, I have the van. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. Not realizing that at the end of that curb is a large red pole. Classic. <laughs> and I just fucking, <laughs> I just, I mean, it's, it's dry. Obviously the van is drivable, but now we're getting a little bit of a uh, tire friction, mm. which uh, I'm not too happy about. But. He, what's funny is he texted the group chat and he was like, just so you guys know, this happened. I was very angry. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and that's one of those dry James sentences that like that should not be. He doesn't funny. mean to. It shouldn't but, be funny, but it but is. Boy, um, yeah, let's, let's I still talk got the deck board. 
Yeah, let's talk. Let's, get into, let's, this, let's get into what the people. Let's give the people what they want. We're gonna clash heads here, Kyle. <laughs> Are we? To be honest with you. Yeah. Cause Why? Because you, know you like freestyle. Because you hate freestyle. I mean, yeah. Well, you live in a place that doesn't care about you, brother. We've had them all over, and they're all bad. Not with me. <laughs> I mean, I mean, here's the thing. I'm a I'm a very Coca Cola purist. Okay. If I want a Diet Coke, I shouldn't have to do all this shit. Just give me a Diet Coke. I don't want to taste root beer. I, I mean, enough, I would say the first, the first place I've ever, I've actually ever had it was Noodles and Company, mm -hmm. and for whatever reason, like it every single time I've had it at Noodles and Company, Wendy's, um, they have it at Wawa. For what I don't know what it is, but every single time it tastes like barks, and. And that's a problem. If we're talking, if we're, if we're, if we're judging, problem. like, you know, obviously the fountain drink reviews are, you know, comedic, yeah. you know, but there is obviously some, some seriousness to it because I, I take my pop seriously. You know, I don't, you know, I don't want to have a fucking, you know, place, have a nice burger. I'm not drinking fucking water. I mean, I'm not I'm, drinking, you know, I'm with yeah. you there, man. He's, we're, like, we're carbo heads. We need sure. carb. We need carbonation Gotta involved. Have. Food don't go down the same with a smooth no. liquid behind it. Well, Absolutely 1, not. Thousand percent. And, and like, I just figured, like, hey, like, I literally, probably, you know, four or five times a week, I get a fountain drink yeah. from you know various places. And you know what? I I said, you know, there's not a there's not a guide to where you know what place has the best. So I figured, you know, I needed to fill the void in in the, you know, food a review culture. Mm, those are the, I mean, those are the best ideas of the one, the no brainers. <laughs> yeah. You know, what don't we have? What I can be that. Yeah, where can I? Yeah. Go? I can be like, you know what? I was thinking Shake Shack, but I don't know what their carbonation is like. They had a Maybe weird James system today. We, we dined in. <laughs> I'm sorry, like that. I, so you, I spoke. They right do it for you. Time. You can't. They do it for you, and then when I went to get he and I a refill, new they cup. Just, New cup. Yeah. That's so wasteful. It's not wasteful. It's hygienic. It is if brother. you're giving me a small cup. If you gave me a large, I wouldn't need a refill. Like it's that. hygienic. I mean, I, I get it, but I mean, if I'm watching you fill it up, like. They're going to the recycle that. So don't worry. It'll be back. You'll use it again eventually. Theoretically. Theoretically, dude. To recycle no, no something. No, theory it, it at Shake Shack. It's proven. <laughs> to right. recycle, th so they clean each individual cup because if there's any organic matter on a recycled thing, they can't recycle it. I don't they know. Throw out the I, I made that up. Completely. Okay, that of course sense. you did. Um, Shake Shack, though, I was the so better, better than Five Guys. Right off the bat, yeah. I'm gonna say that right. Better now. burger? I think so. It's not even close. So it, you're in favor of Shake Shack? Wait. Yeah, of course. I love it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Shake Shack exactly. burger versus Five Guy bur Five Guys burger is Pr price that's, aside too. That's, right? that's the yeah. that's the Lakers and the fucking <laughs> the West Valley <laughs> Barracudas, brother. <laughs> Dude, I I, I agree um, because I mean Bo and I beef Five Guys because it's obviously astronomically expensive for whatever stupid reason, but Shake Shack. Better quality, better tasting, and better value. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, um, like, like, barely, but better value. Yes, but because well, the, I mean, the because the meal is so much better, you're happier paying it. Sure, I and got a they burger got a and a drink cut. for twelve bucks. Yeah, it's that's that's pretty good. Bad. That's not. Bad. I feel like I feel like, uh, and it was a bacon avocado burger. I feel like that at Five Guys, I'd have to take out a loan. The thing is, <laughs> and people compare Shake Shack and In and Out, and 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 In and Out. I don't know if I stumbled there. And that's an unjust thing. I agree. Because economically, agree. nothing you, you compares to in and out. Nothing. And 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 here's the and we've talked about this, and I think you and I agree. Like we enjoy In and Out. We love like would you be kind of bummed if In and Out opened in Chicago? Like yeah, everywhere? Absolutely. Because I like it to be a treat. Like I said the last time, I like it, I like to have it when I'm there because it means I'm in California. I'm yeah, on yeah. tour, I'm doing something. I get it. Um and there is simply no better value. Dude, it's the like fact, Costco hot dog in and out. It's twice you used Costco hot dog this week, huh? I have. I saw it. I, it's I saw really it. it's on my mind. Um <laughs> No, I, I agree with that. I mean, I, I think 
like to me, In and Out is not in the same tier though. Is like, you know, something like um, Shake Shack. Well, to me, it removed itself from that tier by being so much more affordable. Right. That you can't compare them. You can't. You can't compare the two. You can compare them taste wise, which to me, I'd still prefer In and Out. Yeah, I think I would too, to be honest with you. Over Shake Shack. Just yeah. burger for burger, pound for pound. It's just like the kind that I like. I mean. But I need more experience at Shake Shack. Again, I, I got a lettuce wrap one today, so I can't. Ooh. Yeah, no, you I know, hate I know. Yourself? But, but the Self lettuce wrap one at, at In N Out. Delicious. Fa- fantastic. That's true. It kept me way alive during lettuce. the keto days, brother. It, that's what I'm saying. And I, yeah, way crispier lettuce. The ingredients, man. In N Out, they got it. Well, they I, get it. They got <laughs> it. I will say, like, I've been accused of being a a serial overscore recently. (laughs) Um, But we made a discovery, didn't we? We did, and that and that's really my scale that I that I rate is is really one through five. Okay. Because I, as a teacher, I rate things based on a grading scale, right? So if it's really good, it's always going to be in the nines because that's an A, Mm -hmm. you know, and and you know, et cetera. Because Bo said, I said my top three burgers, fast food wise, mm-hmm. were Culver's one, mm-hmm. one in and out. That's number one for me. We're wow. big fans. I gotta try it. You gotta try it. Um, and in part, I will say partly that's accessibility, because sure. I can get Culver's every day if I wanted. We to. can get Culver's as easily as you can get in and out. It's just that kind of thing. In and out's two for me. Love it. Three is the Dave's double. Big fan. So very interesting. Both our moms are named Wendy, by the way. How about that? Yeah. That's, that's I mean, true. then you're it's a strong bias. <laughs> it is. But I mean, I'm think trying to think of other we were trying to think of other fast food places. You know, we had this conversation what yesterday. Yeah. Like what other fast food burgers are better than those three? I think the that's, Big Mac smokes the Dave's double. Really? Yeah, How but, interesting. But I I'm like, but that's agree. that's a personal <sighs> thing for me. I get that most people don't is feel it that the, way. is it the thousand island the max sauce i love is like it. that Dude, i put it that on. what does it oh big time i okay. do i'll do extra max sauce i'll put max sauce on anything i get there wow i, Man, I, I mean, i've been removing the third bun lately which is new for me dude the lettuce it's so shredded <laughs> <laughs> it's everywhere you got to pick up them crumbs from the thing on after oh, dude i fucking um, hate shredded lettuce you hate <laughs> shredded shit's... lettuce i hate it, it I, it's like Shredded lettuce is the most oh. use, useless thing ever oh, invented. Dude, I'll I'll pick up the little cardboard thing and be like, "Oh my gosh!" Shake it in because it's got the but, sauce on it still. I would also say the double whoppers oh, man. better than the Dave's double. No, no, I I can't. I really love Dave's double. You but can't I, but then, eat the double whopper because there's mayo on it. Well, well, I get everything with ketchup only, so my scale is within my own box, you know what I mean? Which I'm not saying is better or worse than anyone's. I'm just saying better I'm consistent. Not. I'm consistent <laughs> you regardless, are. you know what I mean? Dude, we, I mean, Wendy's quality burger, though. Never frozen. Dude, it I, it's a better quality burger than both both Burger King and McDonald's. I would sure. say out of any fast food restaurant, though, I go to McDonald's the most. Yeah. Because the goat. it's consistently what it is and... It's also the cheapest. For sure. Like, Dude, you, you, you use you the app? I don't. I you do. got to get on the app. The app's great because you can just pick it. You just boop. Dude, just I, have, I have a, a, <laughs> a game-changing deal every time I go. Oh, there. yeah, the deals. The Dude. deals are huge. I get, like, Dude, my nuggets they, for free yeah. or something. There's, like, fr- uh, Fridays, Dude, large fry for $1. Wow. You got to get it. When I when I realized that I liked spice suddenly, sure. Um I was for whatever reason I was obsessed with putting like sriracha on nuggets, on McNuggets. Yeah. And on the app, 40 nuggets for $10. Mm-hmm. I mean that's that's quite the deal. It's quite the 40. deal. 40. <laughs> people I, in people I, in Germany are listening to this and being like, "Was? Was habt ihr gesagt?" They have no idea. <laughs> I mean, I will say the two things I consistently get from McDonald's are the quarter pounder with cheese 
because I love the the whole onion on there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, the, I'm not an onion guy, onion, and I but, genuine, I like the, the quarter pounder onion. Dude, the McDouble bundle is probably the best deal there. What is the bundle? I don't. We don't have them in the city. That's the it, one thing about McDonald's is like he has access to different deals in the burbs than I do in the city. I imagine you get them marked up, McDonald's, bro. They're do, all I privately do. owned, so you got the you got the fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the shyster yeah. guy. James yeah. got the nice suburban grandpa who's hey just, there. Uh, how's it going? Owning That's it right. as a hobby. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, I mean, it's nothing special, but it's just the the McDouble with fries. It's three twenty, and like I mean, I've never heard it. of such a deal. <laughs> Do you remember the two McDoubles for three bucks? That's uh, that's still going on here, but it's two for three fifty. Yeah. So fucking thanks. Inflation. Thanks, Uncle Joe. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I usually get the McDouble bundle with uh, a large, large diet Coke. Yeah, that's that's pretty much. You my get standard. one McDouble. I mean, uh, I mean, I usually go there. <laughs> I rarely do. I eat McDonald's as like dinner. No, it's like I it's eat a transitionary. It like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a transitionary, tra- exactly. transitional, transitional meal. It's, it's I'm a, a trans- little peckish. I need something. Yeah. Yeah. And I would love a Coke. Exactly. That, I mean, dude, yeah. the the one dollar soda. Unbelievable revolution. The greatest marketing decision maybe in the history of food. Yo, but hold on. They they recently stopped in, at, at at least at my McDonald's. I actually noticed that. Remember last night I went when you guys went to Rita's, I, I got a couple McDoubles yeah, and sure. a Coke, and it was a dollar fifty. Yeah, it's a dollar fifty. This $1. is 50. devastating news live on Hard <laughs> this, this is an exclusive, actually. Hard Lord. I mean, exclusive. it is fucking bullshit. It is bullshit. Because it you know. McDonald's fucking soda, you know, whatever. The inflation doesn't fucking matter for them. I don't think you anything know? matters for McDonald's. To for Ronald, like, dude, Ronald's fine. I just fine. talked to him on the phone. Yeah, he, yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely. Got the app. So I, I, I noticed that recently that like, yeah, they, it's, it's, you know, with tax, it's almost two bucks. Get with, out, with, get out, yeah. Of town. I think it's still going strong. Let's check the app live on the check show. It. I, mean, that, I got up. the next thing I want to talk to you about. Me? No. Oh. I talk to you all the time. I want to talk to this guy I haven't seen Fucking in Fucking tell me about years. It, Free Fry Friday. See that? There it is. Hey, have you tried the affogato yet? The the What did you call the me? So, the, <laughs> the soft serve in the cold brew. Have you tried that yet? <laughs> no. Is it good? Dude, I haven't tried it yet, but I keep getting ads for it. And it, frankly, it looks amazing. That sounds yeah. incredible. Yeah. I will not rest until the damn spicy nuggets come back. Oh my god, it's one ninety nine, dude. This is horrible. End, end of an era. Hey, hardware exclusive. This is one folks. of the worst things to ever happen to me. Breaking news. Two. Come on. Two dollars. We know McDonald's. You, well, who dude. are you? Taco Bell. Oh, dude. Pepsi. Dude, fucking Pepsi. Give me a break. Ugh. But Mountain. Let's dude. talk about Arnold Schwarzenegger. Anytime. Yeah. This man loves Arnold Schwarzenegger, both from a fitness standpoint, from a, a human being standpoint, from a acting standpoint, and frankly, I don't disagree even a little bit. Yeah, so what are your, what top three Arnold? There we go, dude. Top three Arnold movies. Oof. But when I've had this discussion many times, <sighs> man, <laughs> this is hard. Predator one. Be- it's not even close. That's that's. Predator, Predator is is not. It's in the top three. Predator's not one, not number I one. I think you're objectively wrong there. How how? Because I be? think that is the great like T two. I I wouldn't call T two straight action. You know, I I, I would say it's a sci fi action movie. Which oh, Predator so movie with yeah Predator the movie is with too, the alien. Yeah, but I exactly. also think it's in terms of pure action, a higher degree. So I I would Predator call takes Predator place in in the alien universe. I know, no, I know, I know that it, it, there is a science fiction element to it, to the story. Mm. Well, but in terms would, of like action say, wise, that's straight up. I wouldn't say science fiction element. I mean, it's clearly science fiction. Well, that's to be, that's fucking, yet to be seen. It could just be there's science. There's a, a hunting alien, you know, with you know. camouflage and heat seeking. Soon vision. enough, that will be a fucking documentary. Okay, and you will <laughs> your words, and it's an I mean, action so documentary. What, What's your top? Well, three? well, Terminator Two, I think, is one. Yep, fair. Predator Predator is two. Mm-hmm. Terminator One would probably be three for me. Really, it's the same for me. I Terminator One over any of the comedies. I know for a fact 
You watch Jingle All the Way more than you watch Terminator 1. Uh, not me. Yes, you. We've really? spoken about it. Me? You, throughout your life, <laughs> have seen Jingle All the Way more than you've seen Terminator 1. Because you're going to watch Jingle All the Way yearly, at least. Guarantee it. I mean, I would say it's probably close, but a lot of times Jingle All the Way is not out of choice. It's, it's just, just on. on. Yeah. yeah, but how it's fucking true. good does it end up feeling when it's just on? But Well, Jingle All the Way is incredible. I'm, I, I'm not <laughs> arguing, but... Dude, like Terminator 1, like... Horror, straight it, up. It's fucking incredible. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, agree and, with and you. Then, and then you have Conan, oh, Conan yeah, which is Conan's also both of them. underrated. Underrated, yeah. Like, I, I think people forget. And then you have, like, some of the more ridiculous, like, dude, Commando. True Lies. Commando is absolutely bonkers. Eraser. I love Commando because it's obviously, like, ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. You I know. mean, the the... the animated gif of like the suiting like it's yeah. just like iconic like running man cop oh running oh. see running man i think is one of the the least good action movies it's just, but it's, i it's like of, it it's of a of an era you know total Time recall is, a, is, a, is probably number three Dude. for me i would say i love i love total Fuck, recall i kind of forgot i might put total recall above t1 I, i'd probably go predator t2 total recall i th okay i mean total recall is great I've I've watched probably Total Recall more than than Terminator One by far. You heard it. Yeah. There you go, dude. The um, the twist of Terminator Two with the T eight hundred being the good guy, right, was so like shocking to me. I yeah. remember watching it because obviously I wasn't old. I wasn't old enough to watch it when it came out. Sure. I think I probably watched it on TV, like edited with my dad, you know, when I was of age. But I had seen Terminator 1. So, like, when he's going after Danny and they're in the fucking LA River, like, that whole shit is fucking. Dude, that sequence when when dude from Salute Your Shorts doesn't sell him out to the cop. Dude, that poor, legendary. That, legendary. <laughs> that poor bastard who's just like, who's like, hey, you can't get be back here and then just gets shot to shit unbelievable and then like that whole sequence of running the dirt bike the chopper the fucking sh sh like that whole thing might be the best out of all of his shit like the best thing that he's involved in yeah i mean just the fact that that's all like practical action aside from the liquid metal stuff is yes. absolutely bonkers Dude. Do you know what's hilarious though is when when there's like the jump when he's jumping on the the chopper and it's just not arnold schwarzenegger oh dude it's, <laughs> it's so just, clearly just a devil's awesome. guy yeah, I love Dude, that. That's shit. funny. Dude, you you want to know so two things about Terminator 2. It's the first movie I remember going to the uh video store with and my dad and I renting. Fuck, what a memory. Like I remember like them, you know, like going to like whatever Blockbuster or whatever and they had, you know, 50. Yeah. You know, because it had just day. come out. Yeah. Oh man. And 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 we watched it together. I was had to be like 5 or 6. My my dad did not care much about you know what i Same. what i watched um and then another another cool th story about terminator 2 what what's the actor's name who plays uh, arnold schwarzenegger <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, no no the um the kid no, no not the kid the uh the is it the t2000 t1000 t1000 t1, 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 i forget his name forget the guy yeah, from the, he's in peacemaker the, yeah the guy from wayne's world he's seen his dad all right yeah. so so my my <laughs> sister's fiance Corey, shout out Corey. Corey, he uh, works on like sets, you know, like similar to what you. Do you yeah. still do that, Colin? No, thank God. No, all right. So, so, <laughs> but he he like more in charge of like prop design and things like that. Sick. He was working on a show with him, and for some reason they had to use liquid nitrogen for something, and he like was carrying it towards where they were going to use it, and he goes. He goes, whoa! Don't don't put that around me, as a joke <laughs> towards being the T one thousand. And I thought, like, dude, how cool? Yeah. About like someone guy, some I mean, people probably ask him, you know, like literally the only thing I can remember that guy being in is the fucking Sopranos. Oh yeah, that's right, He's David. <laughs> yeah. That's right. You're right. We were just talking about that's that. That's it. I mean, like, but it, like, it's just cool. I thought that was like so cool that he like. I mean, no, he's still. playing an iconic villain against, like against who ended up being, 
this this iconic guy's most iconic role. Yeah. Of yeah, course yeah. you're gonna own that and be like, yeah, that's I fucking po- me, bitch. I hope he's getting residuals for He's dude. He come, you know how, how often is T two on fucking TNT? Ah, uh, fucking. They're getting I paid. I love, I love the movie. Dude, you actually bring up a good point. You know what I really don't like, Colin, is actors who are just like like, yeah, I was in that. <laughs> like, don't talk to me about it. They're like fum- they're fumbling the bag, man. Going to conventions dude. now and just being like, I was in this movie you like. Dude, like I know he's old and crotchety, and I know he was never really that into it anyway, but Harrison Ford bums me out with Han Solo. He but the thing is he's been like that the whole time. I and I, I know. He, but it's still he has like, to be dude, written out of Empire. I, I know. I know. So but it's still just like, dude, come. Yeah, on. I know. Like Shut you know up. this is one of the movies yeah. for people. He bums hates me out. he hates Star Wars fans. It's crazy. He stupid. hates it. And I hate and like that bums me out. It Arnold did the thing the other day, or the other day, like a couple years ago with the Conan sword. Like he he's the man. Care. He's the man. Dude, do you know why um whenever you see Mondo or something do Terminator stuff? They don't put his face on it generally. Who Arnold? Yeah. It'll be like other characters from the movies and like just the the skull. Cause the likeness, the like the rights to his likeness is like a flat like 50k fee or something. Fuck yeah. Dude, how about last action hero? That dude, that is number four, probably. It's a great dude, movie. Like, Sly being the term dude. Come on. Huge. So fun. Yeah. I mean, that's a, a Another underrated, uh, very underrated. Big time. Charles Wait. Dance being the the villain, and I didn't know who he was until Alien Three, and then fucking Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh yeah, it's true, dude. I mean, I I would, I mean, I would honestly watch any of those movies anytime they're on. Didn't like, we watch Commando together in in Europe? Yeah, I believe so. In the in the in the Sprinter, there's who's, there's that one who? picture of you where he's like looking at a deer, and there's a picture of James just like. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's just that that movie is the most ridiculous Arnold movie. But I mean, he just was an action icon, changed the game, man. One hundred percent. He paved the way for for the Rock and and all those guys. Dude, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's a really good point. And like, I don't, I personally don't like a lot of the Rock's movies, but I watch them. Yeah, of course, because yeah. I like the Rock, and you know, I like and, him. Yeah. And I'll continue to watch him. He's a draw, you know. He's like a legit draw. It's like, ah, the rock's in it. I guess I'm I guess I'm going. I guess I'm gonna watch it. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean I saw San Andreas. I had a time. Yeah, exactly. you know? that, that movie sucks. Let's get back yeah. to let's get back to Harm's Way a little bit. All right, let's Where do we it. get I here? wanted to talk about Linda Hamilton a little bit, but it's oh, fine. Oh Lord. Dude, Anytime. definitely formative for me. I've yeah. realized I've realized like her being an ass beater in T two is definitely <laughs> is, is it so you're saying it's a point of Attraction. Oh yeah. yeah you like you, know what's a, you like a chick who can do a pull up? I like a strong woman. What can I say? Dude, you know what's interesting is like like my dad, anytime we I would talk about Terminator, I'd be like, you know, Linda Hamilton, man. I, I I never got it. Yeah. You're the you're literally the only other person I've ever heard say that Linda, Linda Hamilton is attractive. It's particularly in Terminator too. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even say that she's like hot. I just it's a it's a, it's a attractive. This same, is, same this with is, like Sigourney, this is Sigourney peak. Weaver in Alien. This is you know peak I mean? white male podcast. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. Yeah, it's so but, good. Like know, I don't even what, think whatever. she's hot, but I think she's sexy. No, but I, I'm saying <laughs> I, the 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 image of that is like ingrained. Yeah, I get in it, man. I, I mean, I love a, a strong woman. Don't, but but I mean, honestly, she. It, I mean. Both of those characters, I mean, are kind of first of their kind. Like, Strong in, heroines. In, in like big way, action it, movies. It's, uh, Ripley in, in particular is like way ahead of her time. Wasn't that 79, Colin? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? Maybe 78, yeah. honestly. It was early. Amazing. It's fucking, it fucking awesome. Let's talk about Harm's Way. Yeah. yeah. Um, so No <laughs> no Gods was obviously, I was a, I was a big, I was a fan. As you've seen from the footage. <laughs> from, from episode one of this podcast, um, when did when did the relationship with Justin and Close Casket start? How did that did he reach out to you? That would be Chris isn't here right now. Um, that would be a really good question for him. I I awesome. think I think he <laughs> shut up, dude. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm pretty sure. At the time, I think Justin had just 
only done like unholy. A few di- yeah, unholy. Yeah, yeah. Um, he what was the other? He did another victim re like a repress. One tiger's fight. Did he do that? One we had one tiger's yeah. fight. Yep. I'm I'm like eighty percent sure that he contacted us about it, putting it, out a record. And we talked to him at the infamous Sound and Fury, the motorcycle mm. Sound and Fury year. That was then, really? No, no, no. No, no yeah. that was that was 2010. Yeah. Wow. Isolation came out 2011. That's crazy. But we but talked then, to, but he we did talked no, to him outside of the venue. Did at, he at not do No Gods too? He did No, no Gods he, too, right? No, he did do No Gods. But oh shit, I'm sorry, you're right. But we 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 talked to him but it was after we had already put out a record. <laughs> it was like just so I mean Justin is is probably one of the biggest reasons that Harm's Way like continued to do what we have right. i mean he like because i mean the story i talked about earlier yeah like a big reason like that john hofacker who quit and caution quit like in reality was that we were going in a different direction music that they didn't agree with um and i at the time i wrote um, a lot of those songs on, yeah, I, on, on No Gods. I think he wrote 100% of those songs. And I, like, brought, like, these to the table, and it was, like, you know, a pretty... I mean, obviously, there had been some, uh, like, metalcore aspects to reality approaches. Like, we had started to move in that direction, but I think No Gods was kind of, like, really the time when we started to completely separate ourselves from that sound. It's so funny. Um, uh, like as a third party, I, I look at the difference between those and I go, Oh, they learned how to write songs. <laughs> well, so as Colin, as I know, you know, it went from five people writing to one. And things, also things, caution. And, and, and also caution um, was notorious for being very difficult. Mm. If, if he just, he, he would, he's the kind of guy who would be like, I really don't like that riff. Okay, what about it? I don't know. But we can't, you can't play that. And like, that's, that's it. No, because it was also in in that era too, like prior to No Gods, Harm's Way was like, like we didn't really have a say, like Caution would bring these riffs and and it was his way or nothing. Interesting. And so when we kind of were like, hey, we don't want to sound like this anymore. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, obviously he ended up leaving the band and you found you you found your niche, yeah. And you were immediately really good at it. So I and imagine then, for him, he was like, "Fuck." Yeah, he. You know, there was. I think there was probably bitterness for like a month. Okay. Well, I mean, because they, they. I mean, he had weekend nachos, yeah, which yeah. is his. You know, his baby. I they mean, were I, killing he, it at the same time. So. Which also, we were talking about that guy Aros before. He was. It was caution and Aros were the two original guys from yeah. Nachos. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of crossover going on. But, and yeah, he had his outlet with that where he remained he the, he almost the to the end, yeah. just the guy. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like, again, like with Justin, I mean, Justin, you know, was a big part of obviously releasing No Gods. And it was kind of the first time that we started to do real stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, like we we played um, United Blood, I remember. We did United um, like Blood. Right after. We did real tours. We went to Europe one. on it. Went to Europe. Yeah. I mean, that. Which, what's funny, we always talk about if that European tour happened now, it would be, like, legendary. Huge, yeah. It was the you nails know? rise so, and fall. So when we met Taylor. Yeah, it's a big you know? one. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that was really the turning point for the band. And then, obviously, I know, you know, for a, a lot of people, like, Isolation is, like, the record that, you know, probably turned them on to harm's way the most. Sure. Um, you know, from our era. You know. Which was again. I was OG, but you know, you for were them, OG, like for sure. as we know. You were he. You know his. He was a Warriors Will Rain guy. Like he heard that. That was yeah. That was the well. To, to be fair, I saw you at the Cobalt pre Warriors Will Rain when we covered uh, Infest. Oh yeah, that was a good. That was a great cover. We're not really a cover. We were at the time we were a cover band. Yeah, we, we did. We you did, did an intro or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lot, lots of Slayer intros. Lots of Slayer. Six lots of Jesus spot, saves. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that was you. That was the the, the post killer in you. Did. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, oh, I, I'm going to bring up a couple things. Before. Please do. Um, a couple corrections. Oh, it, he's. But, but I'll, I'll save it. I'll save it. All right. Okay. You want to do it now? Do it now. Do it now, dude. Correct. Let it be organic. Right, so, the. <laughs> 
this the Slayer thing that you mentioned about it wasn't uh, it wasn't South of Heaven. They did mandatory suicide. Uh, who? Um, when you mentioned the last podcast about like the being the, the most violent pit, it was mandatory. Yeah. You're right. It was it was mandatory um, suicide. You're right. Because I remember, mm, mm, yeah, I remember right. that it would being like obviously. Do you remember how insane. fucking scary that was? Well, I wasn't physically there. Oh, but you heard about it. Yeah. Um, secondly, and justice. I obviously love justice, right? <laughs> this actually ties into no gods as well. Okay. Actually. Um. So, you said on the last <laughs> podcast that. Justice was the first person. Oh, that was insane. Okay. That to have brought weightlifting in kind of like this, I I don't know, what fit, would you call it? Fit, fit fit guy. Yeah. Culture into in, into hardcore or modern hardcore. Modern. An, an egregious could, error on my part. <laughs> and but it's funny that you said that because like for whatever reason, like pretty much around that era of like no gods, like justice and I became friends before that reason we connected, I, you know, the trapped under ice demo came out. They were all shirtless, Yeah, you know, kind of had like the back of imprisoned. We're all shirtless in yeah. his bench. Yeah. Like, like Sam. Rack. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe a little, even before no yeah. gods. And, and I remember him and I talking through my space. Right. And then like, but I just thought it was funny. Cause I was like, dude, like, I was literally like, you know, one of the only people at the time to have been into that because it was frowned upon. Absolutely. Like he was, meathead he's jock the bullshit. Meat, the dude. meat cross. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's funny that like, <laughs> you know, obviously in the 90s, like, you know, that some of that culture existed. And then like completely everybody was like, no, nah, fuck that. You know, like we don't want any Dude, of that. 2000s teen comedies really, really ruined uh, weightlifting. <laughs> it was, like the fucking loser was always the hero and the, the hero. Yeah, the, like can't hardly wait. Yeah, yeah, the guy who worked out is like the biggest piece of shit. Yeah, sure. And and uh, and I don't, obviously, I don't care. I yeah, didn't take hey, any any offense, James. I'm really. But I was sorry. just like, <laughs> I was like, dude. I mean, I got shit. Yeah, like for that for being into that for years, you know, until, I mean, now it's like everybody works everybody out. Works out you know? Of course. Um, and what's funny too, is like, even, even back in the day, like youth of today, like Purcell worked out, like all those dudes. Dude, worked, yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Al, Al Barrell worked out like all, all like all of our like hardcore heyday. They're shredded. Kind of heroes were, they're all they're shredded. All, yeah. They're all shredded and playing uh, Gibson cost, like Les Paul. Cost. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the in youth of today's case, <laughs> That's why New York didn't fuck with them. Is that true? I mean, you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I, it was Richie. Hey, another thing that I wanted to point out that I feel like needs to be said. He was right about this one. Is we were talk, you guys were talking about death metal being popular in hardcore bands. And sure. then like kind of like hardcore guys kind of moving into the death metal genre mm -hmm. um and so let me apologize because not only did he text me but drew the drummer from hate force also texted me mm -hmm. the hate force demo came out 2013 and so i mean that's me that was me drew and, and todd which you know todd has been um you know he had, i don't know if he's been in any bands that you know you would know aside from like rats like rats yeah the closest mm -hmm. um but are you are you saying that I mean, I don't think our claim was that like this is the first time it's happening. Cause no, is, no, but I'm saying it's just not true. It was, it was like I think what we said was like who are like who who's good, who's around that you like. It was, it was and, yeah, and they were so. The, I, I hate force had been around for so long that I didn't even. Yeah, think about I mean, we we were talking about the new crop. I I felt the like wave. Is, is the direction. I, that's, I I thought I thought you guys had mentioned like. You talked about the originators of of the hardcore death metal Did crossover. No, because I feel like that would even go back pre hate force at some point. They were way, like, way, way, way pre hate. Like Taylor force. was in Crematorium in two thousand seven. Yeah. They were like their whole sure. thing was that they were half a hardcore band and half a death metal band. Sure. No, absolutely. I just I thought I was like, you know, as a friend and, <laughs> friend and, of the and, show. and band member. That's I, on Bo, hundred percent. I felt, 100%. I, felt 
I felt a little. As it all is. As you should, James. Honestly, <laughs> Bo is... Really dropped the ball. Bo is... And hey, we have, we have a new record coming out. Uh, Hate Force does. So Yeah, that's right. We heard we listened to the Masters. Yeah. So, you know, it'll be... Hardcore when, exclusive. When's that? What, what's the date? No, I, I can't say. <laughs> you got you got test presses yet? Or? No, we don't have nothing. I don't know. I'm just telling you that there's a new record coming okay. out. Understood. I'm breaking news right now. Yeah, this is incredible. This is frankly we, incredible. We get him. We got him. Just kidding. But um, anyway, all right. So no, no gods. Any more questions about <laughs> about harm's way? Yeah, let's get. Uh, I mean, isolation. What year was that? 2011. 11. Yep. 2011. Okay. So because yeah, we just did the 10 year. This yeah. was mm -hmm. this was like uh, also a big moment for, moment for Close Casket. I feel like this was like Close Casket's kind of coming out. Like this is which this, I, this I is I a huge Justin record, huge too. label. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I remember it, it broke our heart because we were I again with I feel like we'll do like a 10 year sleep therapy episode at some point. But when sleep therapy, I sent it to everybody. I emailed every label under the sun, <laughs> except fucking Close Casket for some reason. Oh, really? When, when it was weird because Taylor was like a mark for Close Casket early. I don't mean that mm -hmm. respectfully. Like Taylor mm -hmm. ordered everything that he made. And I think we just assumed like because they kind of had this text friendship that he wasn't going to be interested. And it was legit like the day we signed the ice cream contract, Justin was like, yeah, I'll put it out if you haven't found anybody yet. No, and way. dude, we were so heartbroken because and then we it could have been label mates could, from the from get the get go, go dude. And and like <laughs> it took another year. Sleep therapy was recorded July two thousand ten. Wow, came out April two thousand twelve. Wow, think about that's that. That's crazy. Dude, quick. Yeah, that's crazy. Almost two years. The only thing crazier than that is God's Hate record <laughs> being God's recorded hate. August 2019, coming out March 2021. Yeah. <sighs> That's crazy. Fucking yeah. brutal, dude. Um, Isolation's a funny one because we had a guy, we had Dave in the band who was only in the band for one record. Fucking loser. <laughs> Friend, friend of the show, enemy of James. He's like one of those guys that everyone loves to hate, and if he was listening right now, he would laugh. Okay. Right, he would have laughed at that. <laughs> Classic James. Yeah, yeah. I um, hope that's what the listeners do when I when I shit on you a little bit, Bo, because it's all it's only. Well, we know they don't. I get constant. I know John is about furious, how abusive, but how abusive you. But are. it's truly oh, out of love. Um, Man, hey. but it was a weird one because even on the the on the back of the record it says like James Crispo, Dave Saba, Saba didn't. Write record one second. You were just excited about him being in the band. I get it. We really were. Yeah. No, I was never excited about him. Being <laughs> in the Come on. Come on. Uh, and then, um, but this is dude post bad seed. Yeah, this having Sable on the roster was a fucking. That's fucking. That was sick. I remember just, thinking, damn, they got the homie from Bad Seed. How did we hook up with him? I don't even remember. But this is actually the what, oh, I, what I remember true. actually is that yeah we 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 asked him to play Sound and Fury. We needed a guitar player. And he, why did you ask him? Because we knew he could play. Basically, he was living in Santa Barbara. Basketball. Remember, he lived in Santa Barbara for yeah, that's like a I summer. Met. Yeah, exactly. So we had met him, I think, at Rainfest. Yeah, yeah. And then I it was so. like, fuck, we're gonna we're flying in for this only. Like we need someone to play. Maybe that guy'll do it. Like I think it was something <laughs> like that. Okay. I, I don't know. Somehow we met, had met or connected with him. And I just remember him going and practicing the Harm's Way songs on like a ukulele or something. It was like, like not a even an acoustic guitar. Like a like a toy guitar. One hundred percent. I wouldn't, I I like, wouldn't dude, have believed you if you said anything other than that. <laughs> <laughs> dude. dude, he, but I mean, what's funny is, you know, he was, he was in the band for a very short time. Very short time, as was Dave. And then, and then we moved into Jay. And then Nail Jay, stole yep. him from you. Dude, yeah, let's, let's talk about when he quit. That was another oh, hilarious yeah. thing. Yeah, dude, he's a fucking poser. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so friend, friend, when Har- literal, for when, literal friend of the show, listener of every episode, Andrew said. <laughs> so he's not my friend. I'll say that uh, that's breaking news right now. He's not my friend. <laughs> so we bought a van once. Dude, we did a tour. With the, Colin, you and I were just talking about the like paying your dues thing. The first we did the Acacia Stream tour with Terror, Stray, and us, and we opened a um, hundred bucks a night. Yeah, hundred bucks. Five weeks. But what's funny is that tour at at the yeah at the time the band was me, Chris, and James. It's always been me, Chris, and James. Of course. It it was Saba, and then we had this guy Justin from Milwaukee playing bass. You guys and, had but, I've had some rotating jobbers, huh? Dude, for like 10 years until we found these two fucking angels yeah. in the room with us who like literally changed the band Absolutely. for the better. But like at this time, Chris couldn't do it because he was in school. We had this guy, Justin, for his first tour with us. Peter, it was his first tour with us doing merch. Yeah. We had to get a fill-in drummer for Chris with this guy, Mike, who we never spoke to again. I can't yeah, believe so you was, wouldn't ask me. Even if you didn't know me yet, I can't believe you. We asked everyone. No, we did ask no. you, actually. No. You never Dude, did. I'm, I, 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 think we, I think we did. I think Chris Chris asked you. Nope. I would have said I yes. I, I don't remember for sure. Because then there well, was the other was tour. There the, was the recent one. Where, yeah. Oh, maybe that's what I'm thinking. Where somebody else went, and I was <laughs> like, guys, I'm right here. When you when Harm's Way is when we're whenever I'm touring with Harm's Way, you know for a fact I'm fucking side stage hidden every fill. Cats, <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with him dude, the whole time. Chris will Dave just look Matthews at me and be like, "Damn, you did that. You did that fill with me." I mean, dude. So, Sabe is in the band. We're doing tours. They're brutal. We do the European tour with Nails and, and Rise and Fall. Saber meets Todd and Taylor. I think he probably knew Taylor, right? but you know, no, that was. I feel like that was them actually meeting, probably. But it was it was Nails as a three piece, right? Yeah. Saber. One day, I used to keep the van in the city for whatever reason. We but we had a van for that occasion. Strange. It was our <laughs> oh, first van. God. Mm-hmm. I used to keep the van in the city. It, it made for some reason we thought it made sense because. I would use it, and so I would check out it every day, kind yeah. of a thing. Well, as I, think, to I think we had no place to park it, so and I, and you didn't have a car, right? I didn't time. have a car, so it just made sense to like to leave it on the street, you know, like millions of other cars in Chicago are, you know, yeah, at the, you know. Yeah. But <laughs> well, yeah. I woke up one day, and there's no van, and there's glass on the ground, cool. and there's a couple other people walking around the same sidewalk at my girlfriend at the time's place who were like, Hey, you missing your car? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, yeah, me too. So no. they like hit the block. It was right by the highway there in Indiana, whatever. Had some gear in the back. Cause we had just played a fest of a typical, typical harm's way shit. This was the first of the major incidences <laughs> text. I would, the best part is I, I texted him. I was like, yo, you were teaching, I think. It's something. Yeah, the time. you said call me. When I, you I was like, chance. call me when you have a chance. And he texted me back. He said, just tell me. <laughs> he knew. <laughs> we talked on the phone. I explained what happened. He's like, all right, we'll do a police report, whatever. It was my first day at Whole Foods, too. I, I had to go. I was late to orientation. First day, fucking fish. First day. You, first your day, your of fucking gets fish. stolen. Straight up. We text. I don't even know if there was a group. Was group chatting even a thing? I, at the I don't time? think so. Or it, it was 2012. Early, early iPhones. So yeah. maybe. But anyway. Saba finds out, and what was his reaction? I mean, he just he, was like, all right, well. Uh, I guess the band's breaking up. Yeah. <laughs> what? That was his reaction. But, and then we were like, well, no, like, we're going to Australia. Yeah. Like, this sucks, but, like, we're going to be okay. I guess then, I've got to join Nails and go on a tour yeah, with it, them in three weeks. That's literally what it was. That's that's what it was. Know, and wow. you just quit. Yeah, I mean, really, really, that's what I'm saying. Like, we're going to sit here and talk good about Saba, but. I mean, he, he, dude, he's a traitor. He's, a, he's an all-out traitor, and uh, if he's got a problem, he knows where I'm at. You know. Breaking news. But we did Australia then, and we had Jay, and Jay went on to write f- with us for Blinded and Rust. Yeah. So Jay was then in the band for quite a bit. Oldest yeah. living, living musician. Jay? Yeah, living. Yeah, respect, with them. respect. Oldest living with respect. We love Jay. Musician. Don't see him enough. Friend oh, of the yeah. show, went Jay. Through, maybe we, well, I, maybe we went through some serious shit with Jay when the other van died in Texas, and we figured all that shit out. And he's dude. Jay sold a dead van. 
to a stranger outside of San Antonio, Texas, without the title, within an hour. For five hundred dollars, five hundred as well. The van, yeah, like right. van, didn't run. The guy, well, it ran enough. The guy lived down the road. Yeah, he, I. <laughs> this, this is actually a pretty crazy story. I mean, I know we're we're probably nah, this is where we want to be. We're good. All right. So, in this on that tour, it was it was one of the life and death. I tours. think it was the first life and death. And we we bought this van for two two thousand dollars. Is it a Dodge? It was a Dodge. With like the vinyl floor, you were yeah, you were like Dodge. the you shitty were like begging for disaster. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was. I mean, it it was a disaster from day one. We we literally went. Oh to, yeah, the first we purchased the van and went to exit the parking lot and it died. It, that, at the dealer and was like, the guy like that? Guys, this never happens. I swear. Yeah, yeah. They they looked well, at it for us. Well, this no, is actually, they actually a feature. This is uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> it's anti theft. Yeah. They they did they actually did do a, us a solid and fixed the van. It was the vortex here, right? Wasn't it after the vortex? So it had been sitting in the yeah. It was like they're like yeah, it's been sitting in the cold. So what happened was one of the radiator uh, pipes cracked, mm. and they and they fixed it. But well, I think by law you have to right. Well, I think uh, I think you get 14 days. Oh, do you like on a transaction? Law, like yeah. Um, but the thing is, literally, we were about to leave for this tour. The van breaks again. <laughs> like lit, we're about to leave, so now we're bringing, we're like rushing, finding a mechanic, fixing it, and like pretty much since we left, mm -hmm. it would like overheat. Yeah. Constantly. And we'd have to like pull over. But we were we were making it work. I mean, it, it, it was the middle of summer. We couldn't use the AC. Sometimes we had to turn on the heat in order to keep it from overheating. These are the dude. <laughs> this these are the things that people don't know. Go into just getting to a show for every band. Yeah, if you're this is us in the two thousands. What, what's going on in the eighties? <laughs> oh my god, I can you know imagine. What I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? Like if you're going to a show in a band not from your state. Is is playing and they're not on a bus. They spent a lot of fucking money to be there. Yeah. Yep. I mean, get a shirt. It, yeah, buy one shirt, please, please. God. And and so the but this was one of those things where like every day it was like, okay, I'm gonna James is like, I'm gonna wake up early and go to a mechanic and have this looked at. Oh, I think it's a sensor. We're gonna have this Dude, checked out. Oh, I think like literally every show, we'd go drive to wherever like whatever hotel or whatever place we're staying and the check engine light would come on <laughs> and it was a different problem every, every time. time every different time. code every time different Dude. code wow. we, we were replacing sensors on the daily left wow. and right <laughs> and Dude, we're fucking in San Antonio. We, yeah, we. Which this uh, is actually uh, a hilarious story. It was after Andrew got really he got big mad at us at this show. We all went to see the Alamo. <laughs> We forgot that Andrew needed to get into the van. Yeah. And Bitter End was playing, was about to play, and Andrew couldn't get his shit because he was playing bass for Bitter End. Yeah. He was very big mad at us, which he, he fine. Rightfully so. Rightfully yeah. so. Um, but, <laughs> but, but this but is. But he wasn't there for Loden. Uh. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is just Harm's Way being pre like professional Harm's yeah. Way because we just used to not give a fuck and just show up when we showed up and mm -hmm. you know that's not okay at this point but we, we weren't quite full-time yet you know no, it wasn't just, like really the job yet um but anyway it was chris's birthday <laughs> okay the show ends late because obviously you know the you, you know there was what seven bands yeah eight bands Life whatever and um and so we start driving to the next show which is in new mexico mm -hmm. and chris <laughs> We're like, okay, like, let's try to go somewhere that's open for your birthday. We basically have to land on that place, Taco Cabana, right. because it's the only place that's open. Chris pulls up with the van. It's fucking closed. And, like, we're literally on that edge of San Antonio where, like, if you go any further, you're in the desert. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's nothing. Chris fucking is pissed, fucking gets back on the highway, literally floors the van that's literally, you know, at this point. Frankenstein. Uh, yeah, like, you know, ma made of Held like fish. Held together with rubber parts. bands and fish hooks. Straight up. 
fucking the thing explodes basically. Oh. Yeah. Like he's like, going on an entrance ramp and it's just like and it just like explodes. There's fucking coolant spraying everywhere. We're like, dude, this is like fucked. it just it just died. like the van's dead. Like yeah, yeah. we're fucked. It's it, 1 a.m. We're on the side of a highway <laughs> in the desert of Texas. Yeah. And and what's so funny is this is where Andrew Baker is literally like honestly. Oh, he one was of the with you at this time? Oh, yeah. He's this with is, us. This is, this is merch, merch era Baker. This is last tour, I think. Dude, he fucking, we pull over and he just starts like moshing the van. He starts spin kicking <laughs> the van. Spin, no, wait, wait, wait. Dude, hold on. Bitter End drove past us, pull over. Daniel calls us and is like, oh, yo, yeah, I yeah. have triple A. Do you want me to call them? We're like, yes, legend. please. What a fucking the, guy. Uh, a, a legend. The van is getting t- put onto a fucking tow bed, and that's when Baker starts spin kicking. It. Dude, he he was like, <laughs> like we were just all just kicking the van like as hard as we possibly could, and Baker's over here doing his like fake metalcore mosh. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. I've Colin. seen it, many exactly. Times. Dude, he like so like the mood is like lightning, but like basically we're like, dude, we're fucked. Like like we our van like that we not only. Do we have to find a new van? But we now have a full 15 passenger van full of gear. We need to find where to go. So we have the AAA thing take us to a hotel, like a Holiday Express that we can find. And we don't, it like unloads the van. We check in and we all just go to bed because we're so like, fuck this. Yeah. Yeah. We just wanted to go home. We wake up the next day and James and I literally like look at each other and we're like, all right, we got to find a rental. We look up like a rental place. There's one enterprise in whatever town that we're in. Yeah, I, I can't. I, I can't believe I don't know the name because it was like literally life saving. One enterprise. We call them. They're open. They were like, we don't have anything of that size. All that we have is a minivan that's at a car dealership that's like holding an enterprise sign on the side of it. Like, if you want it, we'll pull it down for you. But we close in 45 minutes. You got to get here. Oh my god. We don't have a vehicle and we're in the fucking desert. Yeah. So James and I are me. It's like, okay, let's go. We get dressed. We tell Jay. Jay tried to sell the, the broken van. We got to go. <laughs> Unbelievable. Dude, within a what? An hour? Well, remember we had to get a ride from that dude? Oh, yeah. The guy from the fucking maintenance guy from the hotel offered to drive us this to is, the These Enterprise. are made up things that somehow. Dude, dude. I, I know. It sounds like a fucking movie, but he was like, I'll give y'all a ride. And we like straight up. Dude. Got in his car or truck, I think. Yeah. He it, it was the pickup truck. The pickup truck. What's what's crazy about it is the Enterprise is like, we're leaving at 12. If you're not here by 12, then we're, cl- it, like, you, it, that's we're it. closing for the weekend. Wow. So and we, we're trying to get to California. Yeah, baby. Yeah. We're trying to make money. Yeah. Like it, we're going west. That We need, we, we fucking need these, to get yeah. there. No. So we somehow, a guy on Craigslist contacts Jay. They uh, he agrees. He's like, I'll take the van off your hands. I'll give you two hundred fifty bucks up front. Once I receive the title, I'll give you the other two hundred fifty. I'll give you five hundred. So he's doing that while we're at the enterprise. We get the we get the minivan. We get back. We have to switch all the shit over, dude. I, I to this day I don't know how we literally put all of the gear in all of the merch. In, in our, a minivan. In our bags. With with fucking, we had seven people. Yeah. Yeah, Emily Chancellor and was with you too, right? She, she, was, at this she time. was going to be with us. Uh, at this time, Andrew wasn't even with us. He went with Bitter End. Okay. Or no, no, the van broke. Bitter oh, yeah, End he saw went us. With and Bitter then End. he was like, well, I got to play for Bitter End. Went with them. Yeah. So at this point, in, in an hour's time, we literally sold the van without the title <laughs> Got a rental so this vehicle. This all happened in one day, dude. This happened in like an hour and a half, Colin. Oh wow! Like we we literally woke up. I, I honestly think that they closed at eleven. Well, I just yeah, mean from was, the van exploding. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. This is all in one day. This is twelve hours. Wow. And then and then we decided like, hey, we can't make obviously the show in Albuquerque. Yeah. Which probably wasn't good anyway. Oh it no, it wasn't good. We we heard afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then <laughs> then we. We, I think we t- we just were like, okay, we got to make it to, I Tucson. think it was Tucson. Yeah. So we You're fucking- You're not missing Tucson. Tucson rocks. Dude, Dude. One of the most memorable things is, like I said, somehow we 
fucking like. I remember Bo was was fucking I'm, dude, ratcheting. I'm on the roof of this minivan, like ratcheting all of our bags down with a merch. Tarp. Mm-hmm. Like, like, dude, we got we had to take LPs out of the boxes so that we could like stash them in between I mean, seats. Like, just yeah. chaos, the and, worst. And then we, I remember we, we we had one of the most iconic meals of all time. We went to Chili's, and everybody was so exhausted. But, but for how some hard reason, did that fucking chilies go because of how dude, shot you were? Oh my god! We, I remember we drank like how many Dr. Peppers? Like like there was <laughs> I must have had just, me about fifteen Dr. Peppers, dude. dude str- I mean, we were <laughs> quoting that because it was dude. like every time he came back with refills, it was like keep them coming, brother. Yeah. Like we're dying. Dude, yeah, we, wow. I mean, we. I prob I I no joke. You know, Chili's has like the big cups. Absolutely. I probably had five. No, Which I mean, is like dude. that's a lot. That's an eight five fountain. That's easy. like that's seven hundred calories probably. Oh dude. yeah, dude. I just remember rushing, and then we just fucking hightailed the. We fucking- drove straight from San Antonio ish to Tucson, dude. It's, and it's so crazy to, that that happened conv- so fast. And we had to convince every other band to take it's our tough. shit. We got a uh, one of those tule like turtle top things to put our stuff in. Emily ended up coming and fitting in and Andrew did too and we finished the tour and it was I don't even know I, to this day that is one of the most challenging things aside from getting our trailer stolen which that's actually you know that, that's the that's that, when that's I thought the, the band was done thing, right? we, th- we thought the band was done then sure when, when, it was, when again it was he and I we were ahead of the group the guys are gone everyone else in this band is fucking slow mm-hmm. physically like walking slow can't stand James it. and I got places to go. We got to pee. We need a Coke. We got things to do. Yeah. We we wake up at the Luxor and we go downstairs and, and it's he and I who, like, we were both doing the thing. I told Colin before where it was like, there was like a tree and we're like, is the van behind the, the trailer behind yeah. the tree or what's going on here? And then, you know, but there was like a, about a 45 minute, maybe hour period where I was like, okay, well, I'm flying home. Like the band's done. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, that's another, that's also another scenario where it's like, Hey, like, if we don't do this tour, like, we're going to be in twenty thousand dollars of debt, if not more. No, nobody thinks of. I mean, this is obviously. I made your GoFundMe personally, so I know. I knew that that was an option. (laughs) Fucking legend. Like, you don't even think about that in in at the moment. You're just like, well, I'm ruined. My life is over. Because we had, as, as you know, it. we had the yeah. same thing happen, where on life and death, mm. our beloved van that Taylor bought himself the day before our first U.S. tour, because oh. nobody else would supply one. So Taylor's just like, all right, I guess I'm buying one. This is the life and death with no warning. The life and death with no warning. It lasted okay. beautifully up until then, and yeah, then, we took it on those disgraced shows. See. Oh yeah. The, yeah. the yep. last I think it was like the last uh 3 or 4 days it's it's dead. We buy Taylor and I buy a new van straight up in Connecticut. Another E3 the same exact van but a little newer. Yeah. Dies immediately. So they we do the we take it back, they do a little something to it. Dies again in Florida. <sighs> the last show of tour. No. And to that, uh, at that moment, it was the only show that Taylor had never played. And like, it was the only show that we'd ever played without Tw- Taylor and Twitching Tongues because he was just sitting with the van all night waiting for AAA. Oh my God. And then we were, we were Tampa residents for like <laughs> four days after that. So I lived in Tampa for four days. Big fan. Great you mall. And- you and like Adam Cole, <laughs> me, just, Adam Cole, and Alec Faber, and and, yeah. and that day we were we. I lived in Tampa, so. Have any anybody has any questions about living in Tampa? About Tampa, <laughs> dude. Um. Fuck, I did have a question. I'm sorry. Keep going. About Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> no, just something. Um. What is it about? Like, why haven't we stopped? Harm's Way has had a van stolen. A van broken into, a van die, a trailer stolen. Well, like, like, what is it? About, what is the adversity to quitting? Our, our bands are our our identities. We're not giving that up. I think they're part I, of I agree us. With you. They're here. 
I think it's a bit of that. It's a bit of like brotherhood, legitimately, yeah. like a, a family feeling. And then genuinely, and I'm not even trying to like wrap this up, this episode up with a bow or something, but like without the GoFundMe, without people, without the generosity of the community actually giving a shit about said yeah. bands. And me making it myself, personally. And you, of course, making it and introducing us at 1720. Um, with no, there's no fucking footage of that. Can you believe that? He did the Marauder like intro thing when we played at the the record release for Terror. No footage. There's just no video of that. It was a good set too. That was great. Yeah, I mean, dude, I, it's. I mean, you're right in the sense that, like, I think that's what makes. I mean, and I'm sure this has been said many times, but it's good to reiterate things with other people sure. because it shows. Like, yeah. like Europe sucking. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Um, but like, like hardcore, like in, in, you know, people will always say like, oh, this band or this band is not hardcore because of X and Y, you know, but you know, I've, I've heard all of us say this at one point. It's like hardcore is not about music. There is probably 10 different genres within hardcore, but the, you know, the ethos and like the DIY mentality and then on top of it, when the community is down, people really do step up and, and you know, pick pick one another up. And, like, I know that's, like, cliche to no, say. No, no, no. I mean, but, like, what, yeah. I mean, I, I'll tell you right now, if, if that doesn't happen, like, with the trailer, yeah, yeah. Har- Harm's Way is done. Yeah, we would have we would have broken up for sure. It was, was it not, like, such a silver lining to be like, oh, like, I, like I, we came out of that, like, energized. Oh yeah, you know I mean, what I mean. It was like, oh, people fucking care, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like we're gonna be okay, and people care, and we have a that, fucking. That seems to happen every out. time misfortune brings it, its way to these bands. It's like, yeah, everybody I really steps wish it up. Wouldn't. I, of course, but <laughs> but things end to end up working out. And and to that to a counterpoint to that is, like I said, the band the bands exist here, and that's why we fight so hard for it, despite everything against us at all times. So like in our tiny world of hardcore, it's, it's big, it's bigger now, you know, with, with COVID sure. and TikTok and stuff, every, everything's kind of exploded, <laughs> but it's still, it's, it's very small thing. So that's why other than like Greg Bennett doing spoken word, do you remember, pa- pause, or I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have interrupted. During, you. Like other than Greg Bennett spoken word, our, our, our community is, is too small to spend our time actively shitting on other bands in it. And that, you know, it, it maybe took me a little too long to realize that. Mm, but like Yeah, yeah, you we all went through of that. Of course, but but like and, that, and that's why there's such a difference between somebody being like I don't like this band and this band sucks. Yes. Cuz this band sucks is it's like that's not about you're not insulting the music that's being like that's that's you're hitting here. You know, right? You're hitting. Right. You're There's hitting. plenty of bands that are popular right now that I don't care for. Course, they're but, not my. But you're not going to be like you suck because that's Absolutely that's the not. they've dedicated themselves to that. That's you're you're insulting the person. We we literally just talked about this. Yeah. Like like um in the sense that, you know, whether it's other people, whether it's people online, whether it's a fucking review that you read, like people don't realize that like that's you put. And your friends and, and the people you care about put all this time and effort into an in art and, and became vulnerable, right? Mm-hmm. And when people are just like, oh, this sucks, this is terrible, like, I don't think they understand what that does, no. like, you know, to someone's psyche who, you know, That's like, life changing. Man, yeah, like yeah. this, that, that hurts. And, you know, whether it's, you know, other people involved in hardcore outside, you know, I, you know, I think all of us, like, no matter what, like, we'll always support one another's bands, mm-hmm. like, till, till the end of time, yeah, right? Wh- whether I like the riff or not, mm-hmm. you know. And, and it has nothing to do with music. And, like, that's hard for people to understand. But it's like, yo, like, these are my friends. My guys. This is important. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I might not be into this thing, but they felt it was important enough to put it out and put it out there. So like, I'm going to support it, you know? And, you know, I mean, for me, you know, that, that's always been a struggle about being in a band and like being, especially you know, at YouTube being like lyricists. 
you know? Yeah, because yeah, like, that's like a, a double fuck you, you know? Yeah, you're you're uh, you're the forefront, especially when it comes to fucking music journalism yeah. and like. Uh, well, and that's why about. I do believe that I should be able to legally duel any music journalist to the death. Yeah, fuck metal death. sucks. Yeah, oh, metal fuck sucks. Is metal sucks. Fucking dude. bullshit. You're fucking another loser. It's total dork. All right, I have an idea for something to sign off on, Colin. That I don't think we've ever actually talked about before, but I know James has good stories. Oh. <laughs> All right, border patrol. Oh, border crossing guards, Canada, Canada, Swiss, Switzerland. Oh, dude, Mexico easily the dopest. Oh yeah, they're like the, fun, uh, the man with the machine gun. We love is you. Sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I mean, it, I will say like our our literal sister country, Canada, the worst of the worst. I, well, worst. I would say actually, the two worst ever, Canada, England. Switzerland, I would say, is worse than England. The, the, They're to me, bad, the, but they have the, they have a the, reason to be bad. The France England borders are both yeah. kind of equally evil. It's it's the they're, it's the English malevolent. people in Calais. Yeah, Dude. those are the problems. Well, I mean, so I got I got to tell the Canadian one. Yeah, so yeah, here's the yeah here's the good story. Or which uh, one? Which you gonna tell? Fucking. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't remember which tour it was. I think it was the one with You're the Knife. So it was like the the last, the one we were just talking about where we got robbed. Oh, yeah. And we went to play Toronto. We're coming back and the guy's like, he's like, all right, come on up. And we all go up to the counter and he's like, uh, now, you know, I only want one person to talk. Don't everybody, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just first. And like, we've done this a million times. So I'm like, okay, yeah, sounds good. And he's like, so what kind of band are you? And I was like, oh, we're, we're like a metal band. You know, it's heavy. And he's like, or well, are you a metal band or are you like a metal band? Nice. And I say, we're a metal band. He says, all right. Anybody else going to talk or is it just this guy? S but stone serious. He wasn't fucking joking. He was. Okay. He told us 45 <laughs> seconds before, don't everybody talk all at once. Just have one person. And then <laughs> when I I'm the delegate, he's, well, what's, you guys mute? What's the fucking problem? And then, and then he was like, uh, God, what, what did he say? Where he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't care for that. Fuck. I don't know. He, he basically we we said like a, a popular band. We were like, like oh Pantera yeah, you know, or something? Metallica. Yeah, yeah, Pantera kind of being. He said, yeah, I don't really listen to metal. Just like just like uh, fake. Yeah. Just okay, fake. okay, man. Like, can I go home? I'm trying to go into my country. Dude, a friend yeah. of ours just got of of mine on a tour just got denied into Canada straight up. Yeah, they just Dude. deny people. Just like, Dude, nah, I, we're not feeling you today. Dude. A couple. There's two. There's two stories. Do like, the one. The LA end. one. Yeah. Oh no! I was gonna talk about when, when, <laughs> when, when <laughs> basically, well, the, Chris, Chris pulls up to this guy, and the guy kept going, "What are you? What are you?" And Chris is like, "A, a, a band? band." He kept he, and the guy's like, "What are you?" And Chris, like, literally... I mean, insane like, question. He was like, Americans? Friends? He's like, like, 20 questions. Yeah. He's just like... I, I. All right, and then Chris, the guy goes, do you have anything you're bringing back? And Chris goes, uh, what, what are those things he called? He said, just some cherry blasters. Cherry blasters, the fucking, like, Gu like gummies. gummies that you get, like, that are Why sour gummies. Why would he gummies. even say that? He was <laughs> just trying to... He was just being a dick. ...throw out with the guy, you know? And, and like, <laughs> but I remember like waking up to this interaction and then like, it's just like, all right, we're just going to get, and we're, we're going to be at the border yeah. for another three hours. And then now. what happened? Do you remember? Wait, which, what? that was the same guy. The cherry blasters guy was the guy who was like, okay, I'm going to come around and take a look at everyone. Oh, he came yeah, around yeah. to the side door of the van, opened it up and a bunch of, you just hear clang, clang, clang of all the cans All the garbage out. falls out. And he looks up and he goes, are you fucking kidding me? No. Dude. And Swear then. Swear to God. He opened it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then like so we had like one of these those external locks like the puck locks yeah. on the side door so like you know if someone should have broke in they couldn't open the door and it, it, it fell out and he goes what the fuck is that <laughs> so he, he, aggro he thought it was like a landmine or something yeah yeah like, like a weapon i'm like dude like it's a lock man like dude the border patrol They're interactions so insane. are so other than aggro. mexico uh, it's one of those, it's like TSA where it's like outside of this like 300 square foot area, you're literally nothing. Yeah. But while you're here, you're fucking king of the castle. But if you're listening you to, to this, Border Patrol or TSA, we, we love you. We so love much. you. 
we adore you. We love how easy you make everything. Now that they're tell gone, the Calais, the biggest tell the Calais one, and then we'll be done. Is it, is, the, I, the phone I, thing. Oh yeah. So um, <laughs> you know, as you know, Colin, when you uh, go into England from Europe and you take the ferry, you need to have you know the correct paperwork. You of know, telling you. Uh, you where know, you're playing. Where you're playing. You know, you need to have a work permit. A work, or, uh, and all the um, passports. Uh, just all the, the pedigree shit that you need. And so I, I had all of this paperwork on on my phone. Which? I, on an iPhone. How many times have you done that before? And, and I, times. Yeah. I had They're, done this already. Dude, sometimes you print it and they're like, do you just have it digitally? I don't need to. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I go up to the guy. He's like, oh. This isn't, we can't have this. Like with his phone. He's like, what is that? And I'm like, okay, well, can we send it to you? He's like, no, I need, I need it printed physically. Fuck you. And, and like, and meanwhile, we need to get on the ferry in like it, a half hour. Yeah. It was like the, the next ferry. Yeah. You can only get on that one The sh- or the yeah. tour is ruined. <laughs> yeah. And basically he refused to let us use it and we missed the ferry. And the tour was ruined. Uh, Dude, wait, just wait. Once we miss it, like this other person goes. Well, well, oh. the the guy we were like, well, can we print it here? Because obviously, there's no print like Calais. Yeah, what are you gonna do? It's not near anything. You're gonna go to like, fucking what, Kinko's in Calais. Yeah, France. go to a, a FedEx. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So we're like, what? You know, can we print it here? And he was like, you could try. Like that was his attitude. What does that mean? Exactly. Yeah. So he's like, you could you try. Want me to break? Okay, gonna... I'll okay. Like physically. So, so James James sends it. Yeah, it eventually sent- gets printed out. We miss the ferry, but someone's like, uh, Mr. Pliggy, like, here's your paperwork. He grabs it. Different border patrol guy comes down, like, the, sh- the shift swapped or whatever. Oh, Stop. yeah, yeah. James hands him the paperwork, and he's like, why don't you just use your phone? I'm not joking. Yeah. That is what happened. Yeah, and and, and what's I would have too- fucking hogan my shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what's dumb is, like, dude... Like literally, all I had to do was send them an email, with like it was a PDF file. Yeah, yeah. Like if it like again, just something like you know, this is my job. I need to yeah. you know be yeah, yeah. like we're here like, for two nights. We're playing here and here. These are all the passport it. numbers. We applied for the visa months ago and it's approved. Here you go. That's all it is. It's all it is. like we. It's we. It's like one of those situations where yo, like we literally have everything. Yeah. Like why? Like what is the problem? You know, and like, it's just because that's the problem. And just luck, because I just remember, because luckily, I'm, that guy was working. Oh. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. luckily, uh, you could you could use the ticket for a later mm-hmm. ferry. ferry. But and still, we made it or whatever. But how how much like, later was that ferry? Like I mean, an hour and a half or I mean, something. Like we were okay, but it's still just like, come yeah. on, man. Like you gotta add there's like that moment. You to worry about really. You can look at our passports and see the same stamps with the underworld yeah. London. Yeah, for like for the like last the last six ten years, years yeah. or whatever. Come the fuck yeah. on! Oh. All right, so man, I can't believe we talked this long. That's how it always. I can It's long because this is just how, and we just again we barely scratched the surface. We didn't. Get, I know we, we didn't get so into Russ. Stories. We didn't get into our beautiful duet together. Mm, that's true. Know? That that's a nice duo. But that's <laughs> another reason to have a sequel at some point. Yep. They, but for now, we, we, we James, built it up. Can you? Yeah. Can you do us a favor? What's up? Can you say Let's it's hard it. lord time? Any way you want. You can death metal it. Oh, oh no! His voice is that. his voice is hurting. It's hard lord time. <laughs> Thank you, <James. laughs> All right. <laughs> that was beautiful. beautiful. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, no, uh, thanks can't for wait having to have me you on. back. We'll have you back with Chris. Yeah. Chris yeah, yeah that'll be the goal. Yeah, yeah right. that's an, also another mind to, uh, you know, fact check Remember some of the things from Bona. Yeah. You need He's it. got a real perspective, that one. Well, Not true. a friend of the show. I don't think he ever listens. Enemy of the show, anymore. Chris Mills. Enemy- <laughs> uh, he will be back on. He will be back on with James soon. Maybe, maybe really soon. I don't know. You guys are going to be together for a while doing hey, why, God knows. Why not? Oh, yeah, who knows? Uh, we just hang out. I know. We just got a nice room. Oh, we'll travel, hang out. All right, fellas. We will see you soon. And uh, thank you, listeners. We will see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>